Oh, I was very like angry and jealous at a young age, like when Sandler beat me at SNL. Don't F with me. <laughs> you hate podcasts. He's going to be the biggest star the universe has ever known. Yeah, we're doing very well. <laughs> Completely <laughs> off the rails. If you could get Larry David to put on Tefillin, Mashiach will be here. Welcome back to Buckle up, baby. episode 57. <laughs> it's a party in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a returning champion, Ellie Leibowitz, and the very legendary Elon Gold as our guest today on Buckle Up. Welcome, Elon. I'm afraid to talk. Perfect. Because I, you know, I don't want to get accused of the Modi repeat. I don't want to have you guys walk out on me angrily. Well, well, I'm you... nervous to even... Speak. I know not to do any impression. You've been naughty. I would never do an impression. You've been a very naughty. It's like a crazy. You've been, you've been a very <laughs> naughty yes. podcast guest. I am a naughty podcast. You never know what you're getting. You know, well, you, you could be getting Elon, like just the contemplative, mm -hmm. let's have a discussion. Right. Or you can get the, oh, look at this, Mr. Happy. You, you know, almost you know, did a Gilbert at me, and I will out it. If you let's if, outdo each if other. If you Gilbert's. impression me, I. It's like a guy trying to. <laughs> L Let Here's, me tell you. Before we start. <laughs> before we start. Before we start. Yes. <laughs> I was excited to be the most famous guest you ever had. And then I heard you had Nachman <laughs> last week. Yes. Uh, and I was like, how am I, how am I even going to follow Nachman? You've built a following, but he's built Vacation Village. No, but you had Matis Yahoo. This is a big deal. We I didn't have him on the pod. We didn't have him on the pod. Oh, would you have him on? We've just been you working just jammed with him. We just jammed. Yeah. But maybe one day. He wants to come on. We're, we're trying <laughs> we'll to make figure that it out. out. Yeah. Can we talk about two things? One, I met the lovely Michael, because you mm. I know, Ami, for sure. years back in L.A., <laughs> yeah. but I met Michael, and mm -hmm. if you're looking at Michael right now, and yes. he puts his hand out, mm -hmm. and he says, Michael, like, nice to meet you, Michael, but I focus in on the beard, mm -hmm. and I literally hear Mendel. Right. I heard Mendel. Uh, he went, I, he literally said Michael. But yes, go ahead. But not just, just uh, when you said literally, you went like this, like Paeus. No, this <laughs> is Paeus. This is you crazy. You performed for too many from crowds. I think yeah. you're sizing people up but in boxes. Said to be fair, I'm wearing the uniform right. of right. a Mendel. But what did you say about the Mi Michael? No, he heard, he heard, it uh, starts with an M, ends in an EL. I'm going to go with Mendel. Especially looking at that beard. If that's not a Mendel beard, I don't know no. what is. Right. That, that's, that's a beard a that's Mendel put on or two, Mendy. That's a beautiful that, beard. No. That's a beard that's put on two different types of Let me guess, your wife's name is Connie. No, okay. I'm a close. Oh, because you're not even Chabad. <laughs> no. Okay, no, just I'm... into it. See, now you're yeah. just being weird. That... This is what we're saying. Jazz, sorry. It's Jasmine. That's number one. Number two, yes. you have a lovely place here. Thank you. And Ellie and I drove up from the city, right? Mm. Yes, we and, did. And then we got a text. Park on the street, mm -hmm. not in the driveway. It is a 12-car driveway, but... Chas v'shalom, as we say, should well, somebody come home and be blocked? The staff. Is this is how the, afraid we are. For what the, is it? The it's staff? for the staff. For the staff travel. program inside is. Can we just uh, talk about how afraid we are of our wives? <laughs> That we can that you wouldn't let you. We had to park on the street. I, you know, you don't want to have a podcast show and be blocking somebody. That's all I'm telling you. That's, That's true. Not a good situation. Speaking My kids stormed into an episode a couple weeks ago, so we're trying to we're trying to keep a work life balance. Here. Right. Speaking of Pesach, I am <laughs> at my worst pre Pesach weight. And same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I usually do is go really down, yeah. knowing that yeah. it's just going to be, you know, a you go lean and clean pre Pesach. Lean mm -hmm. and clean. Yes. Flat stomach. Jaw, everything is just great. Yeah. What are those things like? Well, I'll explain. <laughs> okay. What you have to do is stop eating. Uh. Elon, you're a lean dude. You can. No, no, no. What I are we concealing that. here? There's a, there's an area. There's an area. You can see. There's a boy. Yeah. There's something there's happening here, and <laughs> I've got. I think the, the next yeah. the next few days are key to like. Where are we going after this? Shawarma. Mm. No pita. Uh, exactly. We gotta just you go, go low carb. No carb, right. and then we're gonna do it. Then you go to Pesach, and you just gorge and you go crazy. Right. Sure. I used to do a joke about how <laughs> these Pesach programs. Mm. This would be the perfect place to do a uh, instead of the biggest loser, the biggest gainer right. would be the reality yeah. show. Most Pesach you, programs are just eating in different rooms. It's just eating in different rooms. You weigh in when you show up, mm. right? And the person who gains the most wins free Pesach Yussie! next year. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. I, I like literally, that. whenever I do a Pesach program and I'm, I'm on stage and you do like an hour, mm -hmm. um, and I'm always like 30 minutes in, I go, I know, I know, it's been a half hour. And everyone's hungry. <laughs> and you're starving. We're gonna, it's going to be over in like 20, 30 minutes. We'll go back to the But nobody's room. hungry, hungry. They're just like, it's time. 
No, they're eating their money's worth. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like we spent thirty grand on this. We're eating forty. And at grand. the end, you taste nothing but dark chocolate and potato in your mouth. That's, That's true. true. Also, them announcing halfway through the show, the tea room is open. That doesn't help. <laughs> that never helps. The Pesach program gig, though. I mean, is that something you dread or you love? Dread. How how often do you do it? Every year. Every Pesach. Every Shavuos. Yeah. How often are Pesachs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every Pesach. Is it a leap year? Is it a leap year? Are you a returning yeah. champion? I do two a year. Wait, <laughs> but why do you dread it is the real... Sorry, can I ask yeah, the question? Yeah, sure. <laughs> why do we dread it? Because of the conditions are usually children in the front row. Sure. And I always do the same joke. I say, okay, so you spent 30 grand for a week vacation, but you don't mm. want to spring 50 bucks on the babysitter. Yeah. Get those kids to bed. It's adult time now. We're going to have fun, a show. I and imagine it's like comedy cruise, like on a cruise. It's like a cruise. That's the other That's thing. That's the vibe. You're, you're, you have to live with your audience. Mm -hmm. Now, I love <laughs> I'm a people person, yeah. but I don't want no. to have the pressure of like, you're with them all week. Then they, you know, they talk to you. They say, hi, and that's nice. Again, I like talking to people. But then it's like, oh, we're looking forward. And then that extra pressure of like, yeah, it might suck. You never know when you suck, right? I like you, that. Live with your audience. You've both sucked before. I've seen it. Yeah. Primarily. Um, you haven't seen you, it. You have a lot of young comics coming up to you going, I just want to do comedy. Oh. And then you end up with an Ellie. End up with an Ellie. How about, that's exactly how, it's so weird that you say that's exactly how I met Alex Edelman. Oh, yeah. Alex oh, cool. Edelman came wow. over me at yeah. a pay where he's like, hi, I'm Alex. I'm a big fan of yours. I'm like, all right, kid, get away from me. You but, looked. You looked straight over. Uh, for, the for truth the record, is, Alex <laughs> always has a cold. <laughs> the truth is, I was very nice to him, mm -hmm. and I like sort of mentored him. Yeah. And now he's more more popular than me, so mm -hmm. I'm not mentoring yeah. anyone else. <laughs> uh, well, Ellie, you, are you and Ellie working together? Absolutely. You know, yeah, Ellie and I. What, first yeah. of all, Ellie is a great comedian. Yeah. So I always have him be like a special guest on my shows when uh -huh. I'm in New York. And also you, Ami. Mm, thank you. And we write together, like, regularly. Right. Like, a couple times a week, we will riff really? on the phone. We'll talk for an hour or more and mm -hmm. just riff. I'll go over bits. He sometimes does bits. I'll mm -hmm. give him a couple tags. Cool. But, you know, he's, he's a great writer. In fact... Eli Leonard just called me the other day. He goes, that Ellie Leibowitz is a great joke writer. And who's Eli Leonard? I don't know. Who you should Eli. know Eli. Big hair. Oh, he looks Eli. like Simon and Eli. Eli. The guy he looks Simon. I like Eli. Eli. Easily like Eli. Play Eli. Young Larry David. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. I want he to ask has you. what you have here. He has <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he's as I think he's as cynical and angry as I am. Also, yes. Yeah. What are you yeah. so angry about? It's a good question. I got a lot of You're disappointment in the last couple of years. Really? Yeah, I wasn't so angry. Before. I was more optimistic before that. I'm mm -hmm. a little. Bit, I'm more cynical than I've ever been. If you could name but my I've been biggest working on it. disappointment so far in the last couple of years. What was it? I I was working. What was her name? <laughs> he was yeah. working in the teeth. I, I didn't sell industry. a TV show that I, that I was that I that I dreamed of selling. Okay. And it, it was sort of the that's first. Big. Yeah, yeah. And and now, and I've, I've realized since then, right. that's just how it is. That's how it is. It's happened to me 19 With times. With everybody, right. Well, look right. at I me. Ask you, yeah. Am I cynical? I, I'm happy. I yeah. want to ask a few things. On so the, yeah, go ahead. Finish it up. Oh, no, I, I want to hear how he's happy, but it sounds yeah, like you have a question about yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I want to hear the meaning of life. Because well, we've, we've, we've covered a, a lot of things, a lot of things. But, uh, uh, Who are the, you doing? Who are you just nothing, doing? Nothing, Was that, uh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> we, get... we have attached nodes to Elon's you testicles, know, and if you covered... do an impression, it's going to zap them, zap them. <laughs> we've you know? covered a lot of things. There's actually a dog whistle. You know, you've added in a little bit of some grit to it, I've noticed. Yeah, we're doing very well. A little amazing. Well, it's gotten a lot lower. He's every, aged. When, he, when he's aging, it's gotten lower. Fantastic. Listen, Elon, I warned you, if you triggered, if you did this, it's going to be a chain reaction, folks. Oh, you're Are doing you guys doing oh, Alec Baldwin? It's going to be Alec Baldwin. 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 It's going to oh. <laughs> <laughs> Completely off the rails. I Elon do, going I do. totally off the rails, but we love it, folks. We I love it, folks. I performed last night for a thousand Persians. Oh, boy. Last night. A thousand <laughs> Persians. <laughs> Where was that? It was at... In Iran. It was at Tehran. <laughs> You've uh, seen the protests. The <laughs> Tehran Yuck Yucks. Um, no, it was at the... Uh, north Take off your hijabs! <laughs> it was at the North Shore Hebrew. Hebrew Academy wow. in Great Neck, where so in Westwood in LA sure. we have the the Persians in, in Westwood. Here in New York you have them in Great Neck. They mm -hmm. tend to congregate, and uh, <laughs> there was a thousand of them almost last night. Right. And that's a lot of free tickets. <laughs> no, that's and I even did that joke. And they wanted you hanged afterwards. I said that in living in square. Westwood is the worst thing because when you're sort of a public figure and there's like an advertisement of a show, yeah. you can't walk from your house to get into your car without a Persian neighbor coming over and you're going, you have ticket for me? <laughs> for me. You know, just for me. How much is ticket? 
You have discount code? If I buy a ticket, if will I you buy. upgrade? If I buy... I can do that. Oh, is that, is that why Tehran has an H in the middle? Because Tehran... It's Tehran. 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 How much is ticket? One, two, thirty, hundred. <laughs> thirty, hundred. Yeah. So I did my little Trump last night. Yes. But it's very different when you do Trump in like at the comedy cellar yes. where everybody hates Trump right. and they're sort of cheering the impression and yeah, make fun of that guy. You led a rally last night. Didn't this you? was a Trump rally yeah. where <laughs> well, I start doing it. They Mecca. start applauding. They love yeah. Trump so much. I was like, and, oh, and then I said this. I go, you know, the Persians, they're doing very well. They came here. They didn't have anything. They had nothing. And they bought a lot of buildings. They good. bought a lot of buildings. Yeah. I don't know how they did it, but they bought buildings. They came with nothing. <laughs> they probably have more buildings than I have. They have more buildings. <laughs> Things that I do, and they're doing that. <laughs> well, and the persons were like, "What?" At, at Ellie's show, I your right wing stuff, they weren't in on the joke. Yeah. But at your show, his Trump stuff, they're in on the joke, mm. and they loved did it. A little more, I that in. was my interpretation yeah. of it. Because you were like I... super Riverdale, like <laughs> yeah. not okay Riverdale. Well, like, I was this like, isn't simple. Wait, I was like, you know what? We're we're complicated. Like <laughs> we're, we're pretty anti January six, but like we like Israel. <laughs> it's a complicated. True. Thing. Right. True. The weird thing right. is, I've never met not only met a Persian when I was growing up in the Bronx yeah, or in Manhattan, whatever. I, yeah. mm -hmm. And I never heard of Persians. Mm -hmm. I knew of Iran. I didn't know... I, a, I didn't know there was a Jewish version of an Iranian. Right. I thought Iranians were all, like, either Muslim or whatever. I mean, we thought it was all Spartan. All Spartan, but, like, then you go to L.A. and it's all Persians. It's and, Farsi on the stores. Yeah. It's a different level of Persian. It's crazy. And now I have to go to Panama to perform mm -hmm. for the Syrians. Hmm. I don't have as much Syrian <laughs> Not material. Not the Panamanians. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. We, we got to talk on the phone tomorrow. What do I talk about? The Syrians, they, there's not much. They don't accept converts. Maybe go there. Oh, that's is that true? Yeah, I think they're, so. They're proud people. <laughs> they say sabat sabat sabat. I don't uh, know. I don't know. I don't know. Where? You have <laughs> jokes. Women <laughs> get got, marrying uh, the you know 18 year old girl marries the 30 year old yeah, guy. Right. Schmatas. You have stuff. They work right. in schmatas. What do you mean schmatas? They, like in the fabric business. Oh, they're that's, all the that's a stereotype. Yeah. They're all well, white Syrian passing in a way. Own, Syrians are a lot of Syrians are white passing. I, are they? I yeah. like to say about Syrians, it looks like God created them from all new parts, and we're all like used parts. That's so funny. <laughs> they're very. They're like. They're very. They're You're very giving clean. That to him? They're very that's good. Yeah, you can have it. I'm doing that. We'll we'll take it out of the episode. By the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a great joke. Yeah. Great observation. I, I want to ask you about. Um, oh, let me ask you something. See, now this is. I'm going to wait. Do, uh, no, no, it's, no, fire the test. No, no, I'm doing Jay Leno because let me ask I, you something. I let love me ask you something. when people interview other people. Yeah. And instead of just asking, this is what Jay did all the time. And yes. I did the Tonight Jay's Show. Jay's a friend. By the way, Jay's a friend. <laughs> and I did the Tonight Show 10 times. Not important. But uh, I'm here now in Englewood, yeah. folks, yeah. talking to Mendel. Getting shawarma <laughs> without a pizza. Yeah. Getting shawarma without a pizza. Staying lean for things, I thought. Really. But Lena would always, <laughs> instead of just asking, you know, where are you from? <laughs> well, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Let me... Let me ask you, this. Where, 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 where were you born? Yeah. Just ask the damn question. Okay, Elon. Okay, go ahead. You have said <laughs> you hate podcasts, and you said you're the worst podcast goat. Uh, host. Podcast guest. Guest no, and the host. Goat. That's what no, you no, mean. you said, hold on. The you goat. said, the worst You goat. told me once, you said, I hate podcasts, and I said, why? And you told me, I don't like something anyone can do. That's true. Okay. Now. That's fascinating. I thought about that. <laughs> you you think said this it. I know. Yeah. You <laughs> think this shit comes easy? I, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. and I want to dig deep on that, because I do think- the, We're going to dig deep. The real reason why you may have an issue with podcasting mm -hmm. is because you are, you're like very much into the craft of joke writing. Yes. You come from this old school process of yes. really tight- well crafted joke writing. Thank you. And you, I've seen you backstage <laughs> listening to punches that you've yes. like added to jokes and watch yes. them land, and you really get off on that. So, what is your take on sort of the new landscape that is vibe comedy that's been kind of going on yeah. in the culture right now? I'd like to hear your opinion on it. So, I love it, but there's so much to unpack there. Yep. First of all, any vibe comedy that's good, like, like when I was growing up in comedy, there was the alt comedians, mm -hmm. and most of them were not good. Because they literally would just tell stories and just mm. be hip and cool and alty and not worry even about the funny or the Were they mainstream? Line. No. Like some of them went like to, who? Onto like mainstream. Who? I can't name names. Uh. So I just said they're not funny. <laughs> but there was enough. an alt world. There was a movement well, Was then. it like the, the Mr. Show, like the David Cross type uh, of scene? So, so for not the, to name names. I just right, want to no, know what you're talking about. No, but for the record, 
there were people like Zach. I mean, I grew up with Zach in comedy. Galifianakis. He was, Galifianakis. Uh, he was all, but always had jokes, amazing mm-hmm. jokes. Yes. Let alone his acting is like incredible. He's yeah. like one mm-hmm. of the funny, he's like Belushi funny yeah, yeah, on yeah. screen. He's like Richard Pryor, Belushi. You look at him and you're laughing sure. before he opens his mouth. Essence of funny, he captures yes. an essence. So there, was, there were people like him, but then when there were the ones that just would tell stories or just thought they were cooler, hipper than the room and just would like Mm -hmm. not care. So I I, I always care. People always ask me, are you nervous before? I'm nervous nervous before every single show. Why? Because I care. Mm -hmm. I don't just go, oh, screw this gig. Mm -hmm. I care, so I'm nervous. Now, once I get on stage, I'm calm and I'm relaxed and I'm doing my thing. And I do very well. Mm -hmm. But I... um... (laughs) But even when we're writing stuff, we'll we'll say... It matters if it's funny and if you get a message in there. Oh, yeah. Great. Well, there's nothing like comedy with a message. Like but, uh, the- but I'm saying I think that the shift has happened is where, let me say my message, and that's the primary over being funny. Correct. Then, that's we try message to do. I'm not even referring funny. to an agenda. It's more like stylistically and not just stand up, but like now there's this podcast space where like clips can get a ton of visibility right. from a funny exchange. And that's not... That doesn't supplement. And I don't that's think. not happening here today. Oh, I think it will. No, it probably will. We'll clip it will. up very good. We're going to make you very funny. All right, you know. fine. I think Watch that- he said, hey, don't do too many impressions because I want to just have a conversation and the clips will just be the impressions. <laughs> we don't need it. We just need you, All baby. All right, fine. Um, I think, though, the craft of joke writing, I don't know if it's, I don't know, maybe you think it's lost on like today's comedy culture. I don't think it is, but I'm curious because maybe, is that what you resent about podcasting or do you actually? I'll tell you what, you just- I'll get into what I resent about podcasting in yeah. a second. Yeah. But you look at, just look at the different, like the biggest comedians now, Rock and Chappelle, mm-hmm. okay? Chappelle can riff mm-hmm. for hours and will find the punchline as it's happening. He's that much of a genius. Sure. Rock, who I like a little bit better than Chappelle, and they're in my like top five, both right. of them favorite comedians. Right. Rock is such a master craftsman, cares about every word, and that's special. I actually watched live three times yeah. and went to both them, him and um, Chappelle. Mm-hmm. They were doing arenas, and I went with Tony Rock, his brother, he's a mm-hmm. good friend of mine, and we got to go backstage and hang with Chris, and that's just amazing to mm-hmm. watch him. You talk about, Ellie always makes fun of me, like before my stand-up New York shows, there's like mm-hmm. 110 people in the room instead of 30,000, and I'm literally just going over, like so focused. Mm-hmm on a stupid index card with bullet points and trying to get the new things we just wrote an hour ago into my head. Rock, who you would think, not only has done this forever, is the master, is the best. He literally just stands and he stares at this big board with all his bits on index cards. And he just looks and he's like, some of these aren't gonna make it tonight. Like Mm -hmm. some gotta (laughs) sit on the bench. Mm -hmm. And the bench, what was that? Like he's like Southern now, you gotta sit on the bench. and that was fast. I was like, wow, Chris Rock, who's doing an arena tour, still is studying. Christian Rock is what Chris Rock actually stands for. <laughs> That's funny. And I told you to whisper me the funny Sorry. Sorry. you have. But it's interesting. No, he's, oh, he's talked about also the joke. It's, you got to have the joke, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, and but by the way, and then he's relaxed and he yeah. hangs and everything, but just his process. But back to podcasts, mm-hmm. okay? My resentment about podcasts, yeah. it's, I think it's what I said perfectly. Don't do something in life. Take this as advice. Now we're Gary Veeing this. Uh, that's a real shit. Keep going. <laughs> don't so, trigger me. Oh, oh, oh. Nah, nah, you are. Uh, Only <laughs> I'm not allowed to do impressions. <laughs> it's my show. Yeah. yeah. Don't do something anyone can do. Find out what you have sort of either an innate talent mm-hmm. or th- that you're good at or that you can work on and then try to be different, unique, original. So when the notion of anyone and their mother and literally everyone and their mothers Mm -hmm. have podcasts my brother-in-law he sells suits he has a podcast he and i shouldn't be doing the same thing with our days Mm -hmm. he should be selling suits i should be telling jokes writing jokes being funny on whatever Mm -hmm. acting when you're selling suits when your kosher butcher has a podcast Mm -hmm. It's it's it shows that you know what's the Liam Neeson the certain set of skills right there are no skills you just have to talk so every yenta has a podcast <laughs> a certain set of skills yes yeah. there you go I, you're sorry. trying not I was to. thinking of the butcher's podcast called welcome to the real kishkas <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like to me you know I admire so I'm a great admirer of talent yes I think because I have a little bit of it. I'm not trying to be modest or not humble. 
or boast. I definitely recognize I was born with talent like you were, not you guys. Mm. And by the way, we're going to get into you because what you don't realize about this whole thing, and I've thought about this knowing I was doing this, this is not going to be an interview about me. This is not the A, Elon Gold's our guest. Mm. I'm flipping this and I want to interview you because I've been fascinated by you mm. for years. Mm. And really, I just want to interview you. Interesting. So we're going to get into that. Fire up the nodes. We're yeah. going to get <laughs> this into that. This is an interview. <laughs> it's, it's an interview. That one I'll get. <laughs> wow. That was nice. Hey, the real Kishka's <laughs> also. <laughs> Welcome back to the real Kishka's. Today's recipe for chillin' beans and the rockin' spices. Lots of gas. Um, <laughs> so I, so I admire. I remember when someone, my friend Mitch Kuflick. He like we just met and then he sort of befriended me and he's mm -hmm. this great guy and he's like a big hedge fund guy or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I I kept saying to him like why are you you know what, what what's this about like why like what's this like we're like becoming good friends and you're always calling whatever he goes <laughs> I admire people who are like top of their game best at what they could do and I think you're one of the top mm -hmm. blah blah blah. And I go, that's so funny. I have that too. He goes, it could be a tennis player. It could be, you know, a guitar. Any, anything, if you excel, if you have some sort of talent. So I admire talent. Mm -hmm. Like my, the most talented human being on earth right now is Jamie Foxx. Yes. There is no Big, one. I, he's my... I mean, there is no one that could sing, dance, play piano, There's act, and person. precious. And a trumpet precious. There's and one. does a perfect trumpet. There's one more. Who? Who? Oh, besides you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, so, well, by um, the way, I just found out last week, Jamie Foxx is following me. Hey. Not important. Anyway. Um, and you said you didn't have talent. <laughs> talent recognizes talent. But uh, have you ever met him? <laughs> game recognizes game. I think I met him a couple of times, but like briefly, not like, yeah. oh, let's hang out. But all I know is... I, I, you know, man, Elon got that, that, that all those impressions, man. That's good. Um, all I know is a podcast Yes, takes no talent. So when I saw this explosion of just everyone speaking into a microphone that yeah. you just go buy at Radio Shack or wh wherever the kids are buying this stuff now... Mm -hmm. Radio show. Yeah, he's a know. very oh, dated yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you could tell how familiar he is with yeah. the landscape. So you start to just <laughs> resent that, like, why is everyone in show business stick yeah. to your you're a dentist you don't need you a sound podcast. a little like bill maher he said similar things well yeah did he say that well the idea is we are in an <clears throat> age a little bit where i will agree with you is we're in an age now of people who become famous with and and not and don't have talent mm -hmm. necessarily like in the influencer space too people i've seen were like they book this person we're getting this person to come speak at our event and they come and they don't have like you know uh performance chops like they right. don't know how to present they don't know because they're used to making little bits and things and then you have people who blow up on tiktok and they get on stage and find out very quickly like it's you know they, oh it's a whole different they haven't thing. grinded their teeth and they're like oh boy whoa so i i understand that but in the, at the end of the day like this is just a new lane it's not it's not something that's crowding out what you I th do i think everything you said could be applied to stand up anyone can get on stage and hold a mic and say jokes the difference is can you do it well mm -hmm. that's true like your brother-in-law, your the guy who sells suits probably doesn't do a good podcast. He actually has a good one. But anyway, uh, <laughs> he but, uh, like, but Rogan's Rogan's conversational skills and ability to hold a conversation for three hours and keep it pretty interesting. Oh, but Rogan's amazing at it. Well, but right, that's yeah. the, that that is also fascinating to me. So it's the saturation that's bothering you of like everybody yeah. getting in on a space that they think they can have a take on something and it's really not that interesting. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like. Not everything has to be broadcast. Mm -hmm. Like it's the Facebook or Instagram picture of what I'm having for lunch. It's right. just a sandwich. I don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. Don't broadcast. But now it's if you didn't post it, it didn't happen. Well, well, That's here, the age we're living in. Here's my thought also. I've always thought Friday night meals are the funniest times of the week. <laughs> and I'm wondering, is that because they're like so ephemeral i guess they're slipping away and they're just like mm. this will never be recorded right. unless you're having recorded it but they've but, always been funny they've always been the funniest pre but, all this but stuff. is it but i think it's because meaning podcasts to me are just like friday night meals that everyone's having they're recording right. mm. That's and what it is. and i think the friday night meal like fun mm -hmm. is the fact that a in the, in the age of where you're having your phone off and you're just like all right let me record let me just have fun mm. and but that, like how crazy is it that like Ten years ago, mm. you would have just said, "Hey, you want to come over, and then we'll grab a bite and we'll hang out." So but, the four of us would have just hung out without these things in front of us. Mm. We would have had the same conversation, but now suddenly everyone wants to listen to this. How many yeah. people are listening to this right now? Let's be honest. Twelve. 
thousand. Oh, oh no, thousand. no, 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 no. No, I'm joking. This is a big one. I know. But we, we oh, probably wouldn't yeah. have gotten together. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> right? Exactly. Well, yeah. because of all that Ami's um, paying us. Right. Yeah. There, we're, we're all, we're all, listen, I, I think there there's this element of it feels like we're just hanging out, but we're, I mean, there there's gems and nuggets of, I think there's. You never know. Not to mention, look, look, in the world of, in the world of comedy, right? A lot of Jews, right? And as you shave down those categories, how many of those Jews come from affiliated Orthodox backgrounds? That's a little smaller. And then how many of those Jews come from Orthodox backgrounds who are no longer practicing? That's a little smaller. How many of those entertainers, anyone in show business who has come from an Orthodox background and is still affiliated and practicing and has made it a career for themselves, now you're down to two of us. Yeah, um, three, in, in, three. Music, in music too, you're dealing I with. I was talking about the two of us. So it's not. It, don't don't don't. Uh, you know, give yourself some credit as far as it being interesting and worth listening to. Like the stories that one of the things we talk about all the time is the intersection of the modern Orthodox community we come from and creative endeavors and creativity right. and the culture and working is sort of again. Ellie has recently just. Uh, you know, you've just gone full time as a comedian, and we've talked a lot about like. And still, the, people are coming. And, up to and me before after shows. the pod, we were talking about like the questions you get. And it's and, and it's stuff that we deal with, but it's like, you know, how many people do what you do for a living, and and make something out of it, you know? Right. Like, so and still, people come up to me after shows and say, you know, it's not too late to t- take the L set. Like, <laughs> yeah. But Elon, Elon, t- take me back. Let me ask you this. Oh, let me, me ask back. you this. Let me ask, no. But well, just t- the t- last t- thing I'll say about yes. podcasts. Yeah. It's again like the tennis now. There's Serena Williams, but mm-hmm. then it's like, so should we all not play tennis because we're not that good? Of course, we should play tennis. Mm-hmm. But we shouldn't play it publicly. Right. That's my point. <laughs> yes, of course we could all talk. Why does it have to be public? Why does everyone? Right. No, we should because otherwise we're in it's ping pong. pong. Right. <laughs> Honestly, the grind and effort of it all will filter most people out. I think. I don't okay, think you have to worry about it. Yeah. Plus, it's also nice. Like Ami, if we were out to lunch, wouldn't just ask you. So Elon, tell me about podcasts. Like it's nice to be able to ask a friend questions that you wouldn't ask during That's normal true. conversations. Like you can interview Ami now. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm about to. Yeah, and I want to hear. I want to hear what you're thinking mm-hmm. and that wouldn't just come out over a shop's That's meal. True. And how many nice, times have you also been like wrong about somebody where you're like, oh, what are they doing? And then you're like, you know what? That was he's he's doing something. Right. I, I I you know I think I wonder about that, like I, in the world. I also yeah. think having having a particular angle of what your podcast like. I love, That's different. I love the mm. "Are You Garbage" podcast. Yeah. Right. Podcast I listen to where it's like, <laughs> how trashy was your upbringing? Right. It's like okay, this is a particular angle that is unique. Um, also, I was thinking that your uh, Mitch Cufflink guy should do a podcast. Cufflink be on your, your suit. <laughs> po- your brother in law's suit podcast. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Cufflink. Cufflink. <laughs> That's all I was so what, what you, he gets a penny ask. every time you put one. Well, on. there's two. There's two yes. big questions. One is like, how did you deal with over the years? Jew. I distinctly heard him say Jew. How did Jew there it feel? Is. Fire Max. up the nodes, <laughs> Max. He was just you saying, how stop. did you? You need to stop that. <laughs> Ma- I, Ma- I see your Woody Allen, and I raise you, Jordan Peterson. Don't f with me. And by the way, <laughs> Jordan Peterson, like way better than the Woody Allen. <laughs> well, because it's original. Everyone does Woody. It's easy to go. This is great. Well, Take me to the back in the day. These were these were fresh. These like uh, well, these I uh, that's the thing. And then we're yeah. gonna get to you. I yeah. always prided myself <laughs> with doing impressions no one else is doing. Mm-hmm. So if everyone's doing Jim from Taxi and you know Ronald Reagan or Johnny Carson, yes, yes, yes. yeah, it's like I'm like I'm not gonna do that. It's yeah. hack and it's yeah. not. So I would always find the people no one's doing. Right. Jeff Goldblum. Right. This is before anyone did Jeff. Like everyone literally ripped off my Goldblum. You cracked it. You cracked it. And that's the thing that people yeah, don't yeah, realize. Yeah. See, you do impressions. Yeah. They don't realize you have to crack it. Yeah. You have to. It's an observation, just like a stand-up bit, right. where you're making an observation observation on human behavior. But this is an observation on one human's behavior right. and on his cadence and rhythms and yeah. and how he speaks and vocal. And when you crack that code, it's so easy to mimic yeah. what they figured out. Right. And so I never wanted to steal. Like it, like the only impression I've ever stolen in my life is Michael Caine. Mm-hmm. Because I saw those two guys on the trip and they kept doing it back and forth and it just looked like so much fun. And I just immediately, I don't like when people steal impressions from me. I don't like that. Anyway, so that was like, it just, and I didn't steal, you just absorb it. Michael Caine. Yeah. But you know what I do on stage? If if I'm ever bombing, I just I just say this. I stop and I go, okay, that didn't work. Here's one you will like. Here's Michael Caine saying either his name or his drug of choice. Michael Caine. 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> buy cocaine. But Elon, take me back. You're just, I want to hear the origins when you're doing impressions. Let's say in high school, you're getting everyone to laugh. Yes. You're getting this feedback. Like, I have something. We're talking about talent. You're like, I didn't, you're like, uh, something, you're getting this reaction from people. Yeah. And it's like, this feels amazing. 100%. I'm doing shtick in high school. I'm imitating the Rebbies. High I'm school. Crushing. Like sixth grade. Sixth grade. You're crushing. Crushing. Now it's like, okay, career time. Right. So you decide to be a comedian. Yeah. Full time. Yeah. From the get go. When is this? This is, well, so first of all, in like grade school, I'm doing impressions of every teacher. Sure. And by high school, I figured out a way to do impressions of teacher, teachers and be the class comedian, not the class clown. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the guy who just pulled his pants down and mm -hmm. farted and whatever mm -hmm. and just got in trouble. I always <laughs> try to, you know, have something sort of clever or whatever or do an impression. And I figured out a way to do it in a way that you make the teacher laugh sure. too. And then the class laughs and then everyone's fine and you're not in the principal's office. Mm -hmm. So I was always doing impressions, always just, you know, riffing. And then when I was like 16, I said, I wanna, you know, whatever. It's, a, it's, a, it's too long of a story for the podcast of how I started doing stand up, mm -hmm. but it was at the comic strip mm -hmm. uh, on open mic night, followed Adam Sandler, wow. who was nobody then. And he was just a regular at the club. And everyone bombed that night. It was all open micers just bombing. Mm -hmm. And I remember turning to my brother, Steve, and I said, if I do this badly as these guys are doing, I'm never getting up on stage. This again. is your first time. First time. I go, this is so humiliating. Look at these guys. They're just getting up there and die. They're dying in mm -hmm. front of people. And then they go, our next guest is a regular here. He's a favorite. Not me. It was mm -hmm. Adam. Please welcome Adam Sandler. I'm like, who's this guy? Mm -hmm. And he's just funny. Mm -hmm. And the audience is clicking. He's laughing. He says these esoteric bits he does. And uh, Elvis is living in my fridge, you know, like weird bits. And they were, they were loving it. And I went, oh, good. It's not. It's not them, it's them. It's not mm. the audience, it's the comedians that suck. This is a good comedian. Mm. So then I got up, again, all I did was impressions. My whole act when I started, I was so afraid to talk and speak as myself. My whole mm. act was doing impressions of other comedians with my own material that I would write in their voice. Mm -hmm. So I would do everyone from Howie Mandel, Bobcat Goldthwait, Stephen Wright, mm -hmm. Richard Lewis, Jackie Mason, Dice. And that everyone. was your shield. That was in. it. Yeah. yeah. There was a show, by the way, Mark Norman and Matt Ruby put it in a show called uh, Trick or Sticker Treat. Sorry. Oh, Sticker Treat. Or mm -hmm. Halloween, where they would do impressions of comedians. That's great. Doing their own, doing original material, but as those comedians. Wow. And I'll, original material. Original material as that's, those comedians. Yeah, that's, that's the that idea. Was my, so that was your protexia against the crowd. Like, I'm going to, at least I have this impression. It's skill. It'll get me somewhere. It's also an yeah. easy laugh. So, right. how did the impressions just, I killed. Wow. Who'd, you, who'd you do? That's the real question. Yeah, I did like. Bobcat Goldthwait, uh, Howie Mandel, Gilbert Gottfried, of mm -hmm. course, Richard Lewis. And it was all my, and back when I met it's, Richard Lewis. It's not too different than what you do now. Also, Where which I is built like, it into the set as armor. Yeah. No, no, well, well, I mean finding like a micro community who's going to, like maybe not everyone knows who they are, but the people who do will love it. Will right? go like, crazy. So you go to a exactly comedy, like, everyone right. knows who the comedians are. At a exactly right. So no one knew Gilbert Gottfried. I was doing Howard Stern when he was just on radio in New York and L.A. and right. Philly. And and most people didn't even know who I was doing. I'm going to break my own rule. Howie yeah. Mandel, micro-impression. What does that sound like? Howie? Yeah. Well, this is old Howie. Yeah. Old Howie used to be like, all right, okay, what, what? <laughs> and, <laughs> that's it. And I was, <laughs> that's enough. Yeah, all these jokes as Howie, and it was just yeah. like, I would like literally go and say, I, I would do one comedian, another comedian, and then I would start doing Howie, and I would go, all right, okay, um, A E I O U I U A O E. I just moved my vowels. <laughs> but wait, Elon, always good. What about Howie Joe? So the phenomenon of killing on the very first set and then struggling afterwards. Does that so yeah, to you? yeah, major struggle. Yeah. So it's like yeah. beginner's luck meets impressions, and I just killed. Yeah. And so had you moved out to LA to be a comedian, or you? Oh no, 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 to no. I was still in New York yeah. doing the comic oh, strip. Okay. Then I went to Boston University oh. and did. Well, that whole scene with Rogan and all these guys that are now like huge. Oh, that's interesting. Like Louis, uh, so many guys that started out in Boston. Nick mm -hmm. DiPaolo. Nick DiPaolo. Yeah. There's there's just too many to name. Mm -hmm. And uh, was Gary your class? Gary Goldman. Also Gary like? Goldman was in there. Yeah, he wow. was always like regarded as the, the greatest writer. Like Is that Gary Goldman. Is, I love that guy. Great yeah, 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 Gary yeah. Goldman was like the greatest. Him and and John Mulaney are mm -hmm. the two best writers in stand up right now. Right. And best among so you're the best in this community these, the, of 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 the Boston comic scene as well. So New York, yeah, and that it's vicious there apparently. Oh, right? it's that's vicious. the reputation. 
it's it's all these big guys and like Lenny Clark and they're like, hey kid, you stink. You know they tell you right. <laughs> you're to not. You're not. That's not funny. It's not <laughs> funny. The socks kid. got rocked. You know, Elon. They call you Elon. Yeah, <laughs> Elon. Yeah. Elon. Look at the guy Elon. He's a Jew. Yeah. Look at his Jew. Fucking Elon. <laughs> Thinks he's fucking socks hilarious. Socks got rocked. So did Elon. I love that. Little Australian, I think. <laughs> Is that was that? What's that? <laughs> I was like, I was doing it's made it to Boston. <laughs> I'm Elon not good Gale. with the dialect. So college years, you're you're doing stand up on a regular. You're like in the grind. So, Oh, I'm literally a, a student by day, comedian by night. Right. Every night almost, mm-hmm. except Shabbos. Mm-hmm. And the best, then I was at BU Hillel. The best thing about being both is you can, when you're failing at one, you could say it's okay because I'm the other thing, <laughs> right? You fail a, a test and you go, but I'm a comedian and I'm <laughs> killing it. You bomb on stage. You go, but I'm a student. I just got a 98 on this test. Yeah, yeah. You could always. Were you bombing both? <laughs> I know, when, you, when you're having a really bad day and you, yeah. and you bomb and fail the test, that's right. when you kill yourself. What'd you major yeah. in at school? Economics. Mm-hmm. Economics was sort of, I was very so into So your Jew business. brain was still trying to keep you in the check. The Jew brain, I was actually very into, I used to read Barron's Weekly and Wall Street Journal. Uh, so very into like stocks and, and just business. And then I realized, A, the lack of control that you have in the market is painful. You have no control over it. It's so volatile. The money's never, the economy's never been more secure than right now. Right now, it's perfect. <laughs> but like you just, I, I, and, I, and I also just have this creative brain. All I really wanted to do was, was write jokes and tell jokes. That's all I wanted to do. Were you were you being pushed towards like a stable career and you, and you were like fighting internally? Or I what? have showbiz parents, so okay. they were like my parents were teachers, mm-hmm. and now they're you know now they're retired, but they they started as teachers. But then my younger brother Ari started singing on these jingles on commercials, mm-hmm. and my father started like managing him and all these other parents would be like, oh, my son and my daughter can sing. Well, how, do, how does your son, like, they're on all these commercials. And then he started managing. So he was always like into show business. Mm-hmm. Even in college, he did this like, mm-hmm. um, hey, Sid, excuse me while I kiss the sky. Hilarious. No, he did this. Um, <laughs> he was the first. old <laughs> Neville Hotel reference. Right? He was the, that, that nobody got. Oh, hilarious. hilarious. That was for you. <laughs> I didn't was get it at the time as a kid. It was a Jimi Hendrix reference, but they yeah. made us all sing it. Sometimes we do it. jokes just for ourselves. <laughs> but uh, 90% of mine are those. He was the first one in City, that line. in City <laughs> College <laughs> to start like a musical theater society. So they yeah. were always showbiz folks. That's unique to you too from the Orthodox community to have a family. That's so like, unique to that. Yeah. And then I, 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 you know, so I would always do both, and I was like, "Don't worry, mom and dad, I'm an economics major." You know, mm-hmm. the fallback. But, but in, at, at 20 years old, I'm like a junior, so- sophomore in college. I bought a Lexus from doing gigs up and down the East Coast. Like I would go do colleges in Maine and New Hampshire, and literally just run around. And to buy a Lexus at 20, mm-hmm. my parents were like, "Oh, he's already successful." Meanwhile, you were booking college gigs, booking stand-up. college gigs constantly. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, then it's thirty years of struggle. Right. Was then there, it's was there twenty NACA to back then? Was yeah. There NACA? You would yeah. do these conferences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the most humiliating thing. You do a conference in front of like <laughs> get five hundred college kids from different colleges, yeah. and they just sit there and they decide. And then you sit in a booth, and they come over to you and they just walk by and go. And then they walk. To they the decide if you have a salary Pete, that year. It's basically <laughs> it's basically a Pesach program. Pete, Pete yeah. Holmes showed that on his show Crashing. I think. Yeah. Did he see yes, Crashing? That's right. Yeah, he showed yeah, the yeah. NACA conference. Did I yeah, see? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did, did I see? Oh, oh, yeah. Did I see? Uh, Matt, do do your research. That Michael, episode. <laughs> what do, What do you think? What do you think of that episode? I thought it was great. I thought yeah. Crashing was an amazing show. Pete's a great guy. <laughs> brilliant guy. Yeah. No, no, no. I really. I've done I love shows. the show. I love the show. No, no, I've done yeah. shows where I go, that, that was the worst show ever. Mm-hmm. It's not just because I was yeah, on yeah. it. It happened to have been a very, it was like the most authentic version of what comedians go through. Right. Every other show is yeah. not real. Know, it's yeah. just the fiction. It's hard and to it, fictionalize. And it. they it nailed the Jewish, the Jewish like, the scene Jewish of it. Scene. Of like, How about well, SD yeah. playing SD? <laughs> like, you don't get non-actors to be in an HBO show. But then yeah. SD, who books the comedy shows, is a legendary figure, uh, they was... get SD. That's right. how authentic it was. Yeah. Who are the two hot Jewish comedians? They get Elon and Modi. They didn't get... Jonathan Silverman to play Elon and right. you know to base it off right off it's they get the real deal you, you know were you guys supposed to be versions of yourselves versions yourselves? of ourselves <laughs> versions do you, you know belly. you want to hear an interesting <laughs> you want to hear an interesting fun fact about me no and I'm working on a bit about <laughs> are we supposed to say yes oh are you ready rabbit for this? hole yeah. yeah fun fact about me I yeah. am a virgin to the world. Mm, that sounded more profound in your head. <laughs> Except one. 
but I am a virgin. Do you know how many, how many people can say they are virgins to the world? It's, Other than Ellie. You have to explain that. I don't understand that. what you mean. <laughs> right, you, have to ex- you have to explain that, unless that was all a setup for, for a man, day. He no, always no. slept with one person. Well, try to figure it out. I think that's what you yeah. mean. Oh, Yes. I thought this was a well, show, I thought this was a showbiz, that showbiz thing. Because I, well, while you were telling the college story, I was actually thinking to myself, he, he must, must have had have so much sex in college. Well. He, he did yeah. everything but. That's hilarious. <laughs> no, I, I had the that's girlfriend pretty, that's now the wife during college. Really? Yeah. So I am. So when you said were you virgins of yourself, I just thought, yeah, I am a virgin of myself. I'm the. <laughs> I'm a virgin to the world, and there's got to be a bit about it because. It's the opposite of most bits are relatable, mm-hmm. and you always want to relate to the audience. Like, yeah, that's like. Have you ever said that on stage? What? What you just said? I have played with it, right. and I. <laughs> I and I so you know, say like he was that. a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you're a virgin. You just play with it. Yeah. So I, uh, but I, it, there's a big bit in there because the it's the opposite of the I can relate to that. It's the I can't relate to that. But what a personal, interesting thing mm-hmm. that he's revealing. Yeah. That uh, he's had a terrible life. Mm. Anyway, the I was uh, about to say you seem very well adjusted for most comedians. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, you it's know. a part of it too. But I wait, mean, so wait, you were saying virgins like me and Mo- yeah, virgins. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you played like so, very nebby guys, and I remember thinking I like like really, Elon's not that nebby. I'm mm. not cool either. So I think I was kind of myself. Yeah. Okay. I remember him being more than like, hey, we're doing this gig. Yeah. We Which were, again, yeah. sometimes it's like, mm. all right, it's you know the ninety-year-old young Israel of whatever, and that's, yeah, and we need an opener. No, no, you know, you guys were like, you should tell the rabbi about your girlfriend. That, yeah. that that's why I was like, oh, I don't know if these yeah, are characters ma- or part, this is Elon. That Gold. part's manufactured. It for is the scripted. Mm. Right, right. It's well, not like Curb. You go on Curb. It was and a it's question I never thought I'd get to ask anyone. So uh, yeah, I'm glad I get to ask. You. And <laughs> yeah. by the way, again, we just spent four minutes on a show no one has seen. Crashing. Which well, crashing? Was a big show. I felt like with crashing with you, like you, you, you just mentioned before, thirty years. Like it, you have your gigs, you feeling the. You're like, I bought a Lexus at twenty, and then you're then you dive into the dip. Dive. Yeah, into I want to hear about dip. that. Thirty years of struggle. Dive, and you stick with it. Playing the long game is something I've seen. You see, like comedians like Jesse Kirsten now, yes. and even you and other people, Finally killing who are just it. like it's like the long game because talent the, plus Gary time Go- and grind. Like Correct. I feel like there's an inevitability Correct. to that. Even Gary Goldman, until that state of abbreviation bit, no one heard of it. And him. Bill Burr, and, Burr, and, and it's like it's a testament to the work. Yeah, Bill Burr, he's like, am Bill I just a guy Burr. who's not gonna make it? He's like yeah. 38 in a club. He's like, yeah, no, it's like my time. Meaning, if you apply, if you have the talent and you right. nurture and it, Bill Burr said to me, yeah. If you just keep being funny mm-hmm. consistently and putting funny out there, they will. You're just figure playing it to the out. room right now. You're playing to the you're empty room. You're playing to the room, but they'll figure yes. it out. And by the way, Sebastian. Or came to the over. abyss. He says, You're playing to the abyss. Sebastian came over to me at the backstage of Comedy, Ama- Comedy and Comedy and Magic him. Club. <laughs> uh, yes. And, and this was like, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. Like just before mm-hmm. it popped. And he was like, Who does Sebastian here? Anybody? Do it. <laughs> Anybody being me, me and me and Michael say, do it. Do you say to you? I, I, I can try. Thing that no one knows. These him. people, they don't know who I am. Just like what they're putting the beat to back in. <laughs> That's not bad. It's not good, but it's, it's not, not bad. bad. I, I have it sometimes. No, you, it sometimes. you are a master at impressions. We're gonna get into you. I'm I'm almost up to oh, you. Oh, we're almost I'm up to almost me. up to you. Um, but Sebastian Elon was Gold just Jews. He's playing for the Jews. Who's doing that? Who's doing that? That's good. The kids whisper. skills? You're going into what kids skills? are you doing? So what did he say? <laughs> he said, I can't get arrested. I can't get a gig. I can't just kvetch after kvetch. Oh, he's... And I turned to him and I go, Sebastian, you have a special coming out on Comedy Central. Mm-hmm. Soon, very soon, everyone will know what we know. Mm. We being comedians. Yeah. You didn't want to follow Sebastian. Sebastian is a killer, yeah, yeah. a monster. He was the one guy that I was I'd look at the list and be like, Sebastian Elongo. I went, oh, damn it. Yeah, he was he a dest- Laugh Factory guy that, that, that La- would vanish dest- into anonymity, but, but you were like, what was what that? What just happened destroyed the room. Yes. So I said, they'll all know. And then cut to the special airs. Nobody doesn't even, a blip, not even anything. Then he does another special. Oh, and then wow. by, literally by his third special, I think it was just before his third special, 
Jerry put him on Comedians and Cars. That was, mm. that was like, oh, that who's was this guy? Why does Jerry like And him? Sebastian was blowing up before anyone knew his name. He was filling Anywhere up rooms bigger name. than his name was. And it was a fascinating and Jew, kind of and thing. And Jews still don't know his name because they're like, that guy with the pace the guy with the pace <laughs> <laughs> That was that bit too. And it's a testament to the new age of content in which one bit that can get millions of views. That's how I saw, I saw Every, um, All the Jews find out about Sebastian from I, one clip of I a pace One up. bit. Italian shit catered a pace Literally up. one bit, my Christmas tree bit. Has millions of views yeah, and yeah. I've performed all over the world because of one bit. It's so, so crazy. Not forget about shitting on podcasts. Like the new age of content is an incredible thing for the independent yeah. creator and comedian. Like you now can broadcast to the world and without yes. the gatekeepers. I was thinking that based on like what NCSY and and these like Kiruv programs have uh, kind of taught me that like. You can't be successful until you're 40. Like, I feel like if you're it's like, like Kabbalah, it's you like, can't almost, learn. no, but like, yeah. also, like, like the whole point of life is to be not religious for years, and then one day you find Judaism <laughs> and then funny. you're successful. You, I just feel like people don't crack it until, unless you're like Mulaney or you're like Chappelle, it's crazy. Unless you're like, yeah, so, like Eddie Murphy cracked it at 19 because he's the most talented human being that ever lived. Like, but like yeah, Sebastian, like him, Sebastian, Fox. I'm saying around 40. Yes, you know, and, even but, later. But, but this yeah, question no of 40s. the long game and the undeniability that with time, and persistence and talent and applying all that with work like yes well, you were wait, saying wait, so so both so then what's the difference between i want to hear more about what's the difference between john mulaney and sebastian Malaskago? is sebastian not as funny did he not get his voice until later like well, it's what? funny that you bring up both of them because they're both hilarious because mulaney at the cellar was the one i would dread following mm -hmm. because his jokes are crafted mm -hmm. perfectly mm -hmm. and nobody writes better than him and his mm -hmm. delivery is amazing so i'm like they're gonna notice how much worse and weaker my bits are after seeing his bits. His bits are so strong that my genius bits are garbage mm -hmm. next to his. So him and then and then and Sebastian, who's not like the greatest living comedy writer, but he's one of the greatest living comedy performers ever. Right. So he could take any premise without writing jokes and make it hilarious. You just want to watch him tell the story. Mm -hmm. But the, the difference is their styles and then they both by the way, they both, like, John came up with uh, writing, right? Got an SNL gig writing. Mm -hmm. He was the star of SNL. Everyone said in the room, could be 20 people in the room. And, you know, in, in, in that moment where everyone's pitching and everyone just looks up and things, he was first to, and it was always the one that was the keeper. Mm -hmm. Like, you never nix the Mulaney pitch. He's always just there. Mm -hmm. And then he just kept doing, you know, stand up. It, but Sebastian, it was the slow roll. Of it's working. also probably like a timing thing in terms of, when I don't know comedy had a like a rebirth again, you know John Mulaney. Yeah, I yeah, just, it was it was it was a rebirth in terms of, of yeah. that time. Let's say ten years ago right. when everything started again. And, and, and my old a, friend Phil Hartman, yes, said to me, home. "The cream always rises to the top." And then his wife shot him. <laughs> um. <laughs> You've also come from the age of gatekeepers, like you. Were, oh yeah, like you're in, you were in a world in your early days of like the only way to do this is the only to be allowed. You're so right. Yeah. And I have such mixed feelings about gatekeepers. On the one hand, it keeps the riffraff out right. and all the terrible people that like can just do podcasts. Right. But on the other hand, you have to now <laughs> get the key to the gate. You and the thing everything. about show business is show business is like a door or a gate that everyone in show business is pushing mm -hmm. and you and millions of others are pushing on the other side and they're going, no, 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 don't come in. And we're like, no, no, but we want to come in. We could do this and we could do that. And they're like, no, 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 do not come in. <laughs> and then you push your way through, you slide in and then you're on the other end going, no, 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 now you don't come in. <laughs> but it's like, but, but gatekeepers are also the most annoying you i hate with a passion studio execs yeah. network execs because the amount of tv shows we've tried to pitch and develop yeah. they buy the script and then the pilot and they'll everything they almost happens they, everything almost happens it's all because of gatekeepers because they don't have vision like literally vince gilligan i just got to hang out with him recently he created two breaking of the greatest shows in the history of television breaking bad better call saul mm -hmm. and he just told me a few weeks ago i went out with a new show and netflix passed and i went Netflix and he said and we did very well together <laughs> Netflix and I like oh you think it's like two of the top shows ever on Netflix streaming and that there's a gatekeeper out there that said no to this sick genius mm -hmm. no one writes like like he does like Vince and that there's someone out there to say no now of course he goes well I got five other offers and we're making the show and mm -hmm. blah 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 
But how could anyone cry me a river, Vincey? But, but I know what you mean. Like, but, the, why they why they risk averse to a Vince Gilliam? But also, even at the beginning, <laughs> because I feel it's the same conversation that even at the beginning, that unless you have enough confidence, they're like, okay, I know your internal comic is like, I know that I am a good joke writer. I know this right. is great to keep doing it. I mean, what's it? I don't know. HBO, I think, passed on Mad Men. Yeah, yeah. no, everyone passed on well, everything. But isn't it so, a beautiful no, thing well, that it's disintegrating? But yeah, but you need well, that whole power structure. I enough. love that it's yeah. disintegrating. There yeah. is no Hollywood. You do it yourself. Yeah. Well, no, what I like about it is is because the, he probably got a no not because it's not good enough, but it was just like like you're you're in sales. It's like a business decision. It didn't work for them on a business level. Maybe, but, but how? not because it's not good insane, enough. Because, that's insane. But that's you don't insane. know the internals. It's, it's Maybe they're, they're suffering with other shows and competing. Right. Oh, that's going to yeah, cannibalize yeah, yeah, this right. show. We have this one you coming out. Know. Some exec hates this person who works yeah. on the show. But We're the only allowed that, one New Mexico show every yeah. 10 years. Yeah. But you don't know the reasons. That's the whole point. It's all nonsense. But the fact is that gatekeepers also inhibit your ability to use your talent for good to its fullest capability to develop fun TV shows to, you know, gatekeepers just, and, and, and they just, they kill you. And rejection is every single day. Every day you get rejected. It's an audition, Mm -hmm. the casting gatekeepers, the producers, whatever it's network executives. You don't get parts. You don't sell shows. You don't Mm -hmm. sell scripts, whatever. And it kills you. And the only thing that keeps me going is even if I get rejected again during the day, at night I go up and destroy a club or mm-hmm. whatever, an audience, and then go, oh yeah, they were wrong. Mm-hmm. Like literally you get, no, 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 we don't like him, he's not funny, mm-hmm. click. And then it's like, oh no, 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 those thousand people just gave me a standing ovation, like last night. But anyway, <laughs> the craziest story- It's a similar story thing is- when a video does well and everyone's like, I'm loving it. I'm like, wow, like the, the fan interface to what you've done, right? Pr- you know, like you don't need any more proof than that because that's what you're trying to get to in this middle- Man, in this behemoth is dis- is losing its. When I power. heard that uh, Jerry Seinfeld couldn't sell comedians in cars mm-hmm. after the show Seinfeld, mm-hmm. I- I'm going to say that one more time. So Jerry Seinfeld does a show called Seinfeld, the biggest show in the history of television, the most lucrative, the most widely watched. Like it made two billion dollars for everybody. Mm-hmm. And he went to all the networks and all the cable, and they went, no thanks. If Jerry Seinfeld sat at a pitch and went, I'm doing a show about pooping. Mm -hmm. I take a poop. Mm -hmm. Well, wait, wait, Jerry. So you're just going to crap the whole, I'm just going to crap. What's the deal? What's the deal with poop? (laughs) But but, but is it going to be like different kind? Like one day you'll have like a loose kind of a diarrhea-ish, and one day maybe you won't be like, you'll be constipated. Like we'll mix it up. No. No, I'm just gonna poop, mm-hmm. and uh, and and I'd be like sold. You would trust his. Are you instinct. kidding, Jerry Seinfeld pooping? No. It's also called the real kishkas. Kish <laughs> it's also called the real kishkas. Tag, tag it, tag it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but when you back. know when, when they're turning I'm Seinfeld, not in the game long, long enough yet to know the terminology. When they're turning Seinfeld down, and you know that they're yeah. they're just like chasing, mm-hmm. chasing what has worked before. But that, the other, but that's rinse the and repeat. Is that yeah. why are you not having a? Chris Rock or a senior elder comedian on these boards of Netflix. Right. Wouldn't you think to have a Chris Rock when eventually he retires, if he does, just be like, all right, this is a good one. This mm. is a good one. Right. A, a because nobody spat. recognizes talent like talent. We are yeah. executive. We, but we also don't against- see the dark side of it. And, I, and there, I agree with you, but it could be to play instead of a devil's advocate that there's all this money lost on so many shows that Correct. were supposed to be funny and hits, and, and there's a ton of losses. So that but, is exactly yeah. the point that mm-hmm. not only is it, is, it, is it about the money, but it's the fear of losing their job. Correct. Yeah. If they pick one wrong show, they're well, out, that, and now they have no Their job. incentive that's is to be every, careful and yeah. jump on so something that's high. That's why every movie is a reboot now, yeah. or right. a sequel. Yeah. Because there's no original are, ideas. Yeah. Why well, would we go for it? What the Golden Age of TV did is these these desperate networks were willing to gamble on interesting ideas, and then and then all the other streamers yeah. saw it, and they're like, oh, we can scale interesting. Interesting. Right. So AMC, we know we know what's interesting now, and right. now it's boring. AMC wasn't a network before, right. you know, Breaking Mad Men. Right? No, exactly. Right. But Michael, you said before talking about like we're talking about failures and like dealing with disappointments and that stream of rejections that lead to ultimate successes um, over the long term. The idea of um, of I lost my train of thought. It's okay. We'll get the, back to it. No, the, no, 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 no. The dip. The dip, but you were saying that... uh... Rejection, rejection, rejection. (laughs) Oh, you'll remember this when I tell this story. I love when people come over to me and go... It was a good one. Oh, you'll get it back. If you don't think about it, it'll come back. I love when people come over to me and they go, I don't want to swell your head, Mm -hmm. but you're my favorite, whatever. Or I I, I, I don't want to get your (laughs) ego big, but 
you're hilarious. And I go, you, you don't need the first part because my <laughs> life is just rejection. It's just 30 years of rejection. Right. You can get right to the compliment because these compliments are, mean a lot to me and they're very important to hear because if I don't uh, hear it from I you guys, it, you I knew right. you'd remember it. It. <laughs> If you don't hear it from me, oh, let's do it before you forget. I lost it. Um, <laughs> We have this debate. I tend to get very encouraged by other people's success because when people finally succeed in a grind, I'm like, it's possible. Absolutely. There you go. And you get uh, discouraged when someone else succeeds. Well, you want to no. burn it to the ground. No, no, no. Well, no. Well, well, Maybe no, correct me no, if I'm wrong. What we landed on is when is, is when you start when you get angry at someone else's success. It's a sign that that's what you want to be doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Your jealousy is that because you want to be doing. But you it. have an instinct that you've said you've worked on where it's just like, oh, don't yeah, get no, discouraged. I want to like so the question ultimately is is like when you see somebody you came came from the school of people who've gone on to become huge and it's like is that encouraging or discouraging? Mm -hmm. Both, mm -hmm. it's both. I see like Chappelle who mm -hmm. again he was 15 years old yeah. and Barry Katz, my manager, mm -hmm. brought him in from D.C. Mm -hmm. and found him in D.C. and said, "You got to come, you got to come to New York, man." Do you know Barry <laughs> Katz? That's no. great. And he's, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I got that, it. I got I'm it. Sure. He talks exactly like that. Barry, you, Barry watches. Yeah, you yeah. sit in the yeah. office. He Barry Katz watches this. Yeah. Oh, good, we'll watch, watch. Yeah, yeah. watch the movie. The comedian Barry Katz. Has. He's in okay. it. Okay. So he comes. I come into the office. He goes. I just brought this kid in from D.C. He's one of the greatest, <laughs> most talented people you'll ever meet. He's goddamn hilarious. He's going to be the biggest star the universe has ever known. He always overdoes yes. things. Yes. He yes. always yes. like blows everything out of proportion. And then cut to, there's this skinny kid sitting on the couch like, hey, man. Yeah. And I was like, hey, kid, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. And I was thoroughly unimpressed. I was mm. like, this skinny little kid sitting on a couch from D.C. Mm -hmm. It's like another open micer. Mm -hmm. And then like that night, he's like, you want to watch Dave? He's going to be performing at the Boston Comedy Club tonight. <laughs> he's going to blow the roof off the dump. It's going to be like nothing you've ever oh. seen. Not since the revelation at Sinai. Like a chipmunk. Where I'll Moses came down with the tablets. Have you seen a performance that you're about to see? Michael, so, feed you on some peanuts. You look like an Ice Age yeah, chipmunk. It is it literally yes. that. Yeah. And that's what Barry looks like. That's what Barry looks like. It is exact. By the Great. way, I did Fantastic. Barry Katz on Chappelle's show. Oh. Oh where Dave God. and Neil uh. asked me to play the comedy club manager that was right. really our old manager that says, you know, Dave, I, I, I told you you were going to make it. And he was like, no, man, you said I wouldn't. And he pushes me down the stairs and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and torches my club. But anyway, mm. later that night, we went to the club and I watched Dave and I went, oh, my God, mm. he's going to be the biggest thing on. Or you could just see it. You mm. just saw this raw talent, this ability to you know, hit punchlines and that delivery that was so unique and original and oh mm. my God. So anyway, so then you watch Dave's meteoric rise and he also like surpasses you. So you, so part of you is like jealous, but a part of you is inspired by it. Now mm. I'll never be as good as Dave or as talented as Dave. So even if he surpassed me like this, if I could just go to there, that's fine. I don't, mm. I don't have to be the greatest comedian that ever lived because I know I never will be. Well, I also realized that nobody is everybody's favorite comedian. Mm -hmm. So don't try to be everybody's favorite comedian because nobody mm -hmm. is everybody's favorite comedian. So then, but then you see people, again, I won't name names, mm -hmm. who are literally open micers, who like bomb every night, who aren't funny, and then, and, and you're here, and then they go like this, and that's where the resentment comes in because you're like, Wow, so they have zero talent. They're literally not funny, and they hit something. I don't know, maybe they did a roast, and they were good on the roast, and they, that spiraled into whatever, or maybe they, that, it, that, then you start. But again, you don't want to get cynical, yeah. and you don't want to become jealous. There's somebody's comic that they're into. Yeah. They're, but they, you're they bring only people. competing with yourself. That's right. why I never get too angry at other success, mm -hmm. and usually it inspires me, like, well, if they could do it, Oh my, it's like anyone can. Well, when did you develop that? Did you start out with that attitude, or you had to learn that? At no, I was point. very like angry and jealous at a young age. Like when Sandler beat me at SNL, mm. we were both screen testing for SNL at the same time. And um, Shab, how would you have pulled that off? Yeah, and I and I was like, this was at the time before I was a Sandler fan. Mm. Now I'm like a huge Sandler fan because looking back in hindsight, you recognize this is like mm. a unique comedic genius. Like he is a singular talent. You can't imitate. It's like you can imitate him, but you can't like replicate. Like he is his own thing. Yeah, sure. At the time, I was just like, 
Adam Sandler for SNL. Mm. You need to be versatile. You mm. need to do voices and impressions. Right. You know, you should have gotten SNL. You know, how so would you have done the Shabbos thing, walking and like not touching anything? So I think everything <laughs> is uh, yeah. Min Hashamayim and right. Basharit, and I think it was meant to be. I was like, yeah. I mean, SNL. I was yeah. in the final ten with Will Ferrell right. and whatever, yeah. and uh, Elon go. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> you heard it. I mean, I was about to do it, and I would have sort of made sacrifices and justified and said, you know, if I just walk to the studio yeah, yeah. and I do this, I'll get to a level where I can keep Shabbos on my own terms or whatever, mm -hmm. but I have no control. At least the show films after Shabbos ends, whatever. But anyway, it was meant to be that I didn't do that show. Mm -hmm. But with Sandler, when he got SNL, and I was like, this is a guy who doesn't do impressions, It doesn't have that versatility. You know, he, he's just like this goofy kid. Mm -hmm. He was really just a goofy kid. It was funny, but mm -hmm. not like SNL, Dana Carvey, Not the Eddie traditional Murphy. brand. Oh, my SNL. God. You, right. you look at Billy Crystal Martin short, yeah. and it's like Adam Sandler. Turns out Adam Sandler did, like, unbelievable on SNL. Right. But you had the model of, like, what your act was <laughs> like and your, and your sensibilities. Yeah, but, I was like, I do impressions. I'm yeah. perfect for SNL. And then he gets it, so then you're angry. Yeah. And then only you realize later when you... First of all, you start caring about the things that are important in life and you don't care about, like for me, it's my big three are God, family, and comedy. Mm -hmm. So comedy is last, but it's up there in my top three. In what order? No, in that order. I know, I know. I'm just, what do you mean? I was, I was referencing- God before words. family? God. Oh yeah, God gave me family. Yeah. Oh, God gave me life. I, of course, God before everything. God, uh, screw my family. They're irritating. Was, no. <laughs> by, by the way, comedian Mike Kaplan, who's one of the best writers, if you know his stuff, mm -hmm. he actually has one of a very Jewish bit where he says he talks about like the the I don't know if it's Gemara where they say when you go up to heaven, they're not going to ask why weren't you like Zusha. They right. say why weren't you like this person? They're going to ask why weren't you like Zusha. So the idea that you're like. You know, I mean, you're just comparing yourself to you. Correct. Not this random. That's all you have to do. I can't imagine, because I imagine showbiz is like this combination of like a huge amount of luck mm -hmm. plus talent. Huge yeah. amount of And your of definitions luck of talent. success over time, have how have they changed in, in this process? Of yeah. like going That's through. another great point. I, I also found that interesting. Like I was like, some of the people who were contestants on Last Comic Standing mm -hmm. were getting judged by comedians I'd never heard of. Right. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? That was so strange to yeah. me that... You're yeah. like Roy Wood Jr. But the Gamzu Latova. You didn't get SNL. You had more years of like in the grind, but yeah. you've developed a sense of priority and a hierarchy of values yeah. over the course of that. Yeah, and, and, and your yeah. definition of success building an audience that is your audience. Yeah. As opposed to having to like Correct. You know, no, I, th I think that's really interesting, especially with having Ellie here, because like Ellie, you, you just did your first special, your your first uh, hour, mm -hmm. which was hilarious and Amazing. was awesome. Sold and out. like, and you're you're very interesting because you're going for a very very niche audience, and we spoke about that on the last episode. Mm -hmm. But like like when you think about it, do you think about being the biggest comedian in the world with with your routine? I or? think about it as like people are like, you write jokes for regular crowd, you know, non Jews or. People, I guess, mm -hmm. but I, <laughs> you know, I, I think about it, I write in Jewish bits, mm -hmm. and that's what I think of, and that's primarily what I think of. But I think, I think if you can find your, I guess, zone of like, all right, this is my spot of where I'm doing, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm gonna keep doing, and eventually I'll develop enough skills. Okay, okay, I can write for a broader audience, whatever, mm -hmm. that's fine. But yeah, yeah, I think that you mm -hmm. find the thing that you're good at and keep doing that, mm -hmm. and eventually. You know, I think I've heard Conan say that Conan or Pete Holmes quoted Conan saying, "You just keep doing your thing, ringing that bell, and eventually people will mm -hmm. will notice it." Right. right, and it's also right what you know. So what yeah. do we know? Yeah. We're, yeah. we're in shul. We can't turn off the observational eye of like, "Oh, that's funny." Mm -hmm. I mean, right. I do that. We do that yeah. probably at shivas. I mean, at, at, sure. Wherever you go, you you <sighs> see things funny. And this is a unique <laughs> angle you have that no comedian has. So it's almost like why right. why get rid of the one thing that makes you have a unique angle? As Neil Brennan said deep, to me, not why it's the goal gold rush of comedy mm -hmm. because no one's out there doing this of premises like you could just get every premise mm -hmm. that no one else in the world has ever done a bit about a schach of a sukkah right so you got it yeah and think of how neil brendan must feel be like i co-created the one of the greatest shows mm -hmm. Chappelle's show of all time and people you say neil brendan a lot of people go who right but that being said he has his own great yeah. career no 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 yeah. i'm saying that like he must have it must have been many well, that's, years that's the larry david jerry seinfeld thing imagine mm. creating seinfeld and you're the genius behind seinfeld mm. and you both go to a restaurant and let's say like jerry's valeting and larry walks in and they go just go uh no we're we're booked oh no come on uh, uh. 
No, 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 <laughs> sir. We have no tables. We're overbooked. Ah! And then Jerry walks in. Mr. Seinfeld, right this I way. With, right. And then it's like, wait, yeah. but I'm the guy that right. this is the real. So he had to do curb mm. just to show the world. Yeah. Hey, I got to do curb so I don't have to park on the curb. <laughs> right. Right. I, I, park at the curb. I, I've always wanted to hear Neil Brennan talk about uh, it seems like a healthy thing for him to do. Like, you know what? I do want to be famous. I do want people to know who so I he am. Did. And, and so I'm going to do a special and, and get yeah, out he there. Did it seems like a healthy thing. Because he's a great comedian. Yeah. Yeah. But again, writer. everybody was like yeah. Chappelle's show. And they're yeah. like, of course. this guy who was a great writer. But, well, that happens all the time. Ray Romano yeah. and Phil Rosenthal. Right. Phil Rosenthal yeah. was yeah. the genius behind. Raymond mm. and imagine the frustration and years of Ray, Ray, Ray. Everything, everything oh, is Ray. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh you know, I don't even. Oh, don't, boy. Don't. Mine's better. I told you. No, no, no. What are you mine's doing better. Here? You yeah. Look, yours is too high. You. It's too high. No, it's gotta no, go it's lower. Lower. Yours, yours is louder, Jordan. No, no, yours is lower. Yours is louder, Jordan. Yeah. Louder, Jordan. He, now, he's a little Nixon God, and he's a little Jordan a little, Peterson. Like Phil had to do. Hey, everybody loves Elon. Phil had to do somebody's somebody feed Phil because oh, it's yeah. like recognize me. But, 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 but I was seeing Alex Edelman's show last summer. I, I was hanging out to talk to him afterwards, and like in the audience is Ray Romano and Taylor Tomlinson. Yeah. And I asked, I'm such an idiot. I asked Taylor Tomlinson to take a picture of me. And Ray oh, <laughs> but here's oh, the who's thing: Taylor, though, I don't, who's Taylor if Tomlinson? If you're doing it know. for the acclaim and the fame and not for the love of the craft, like you're kind of doing it for the wrong. You have a backwards a that's bit. another shift in the paradigm that yeah. i went from i really wanted to be famous mm -hmm. as a kid and it's weird because i also knew i would be like it's it's, it's almost like this manifest it's yeah. a manifest uh, mm -hmm. premonition is the word i i liken it to being gay you know very young like <laughs> i'm different and you're not gay at like four. But you should be gay. But you but you know you're gonna you be gay. You have the gay. ingredients. And I would think, I would literally like be in a shul and be like, wow, one day everyone in shul is gonna like point and go, oh my God, he's here. And it happens every time I walk into a shul. But you have this, this vision and it's weird, you know. But then, and that's what you want. You want fame. Mm. Then it just shifts to all I want is not fame. I'd like to be recognized by as many people as possible. But I just want to be good. Mm -hmm. I just want to be good at what I'm doing. Want to be able to pay the bills, be good, mm -hmm. and and try to achieve some sort of greatness without. Who cares about fame? And I never wanted to be famous for the like. I never want to be infamous. Right. That to me, it's not about just being famous. It's about oh my god, I love your stuff, and I, da, da, da. and it's all perspective. I had a uh, well, I had he's, an he's, old. He's, he's smiling. I'm thinking a couple something. things. First of all, I was thinking that I think of John. Don't forget your thoughts. John Mulaney's <laughs> bit about how it's a bit where he Hold says in. he's like in heaven before they. I'm such my limbs don't work, and all of a sudden, like before I got put my soul in the body, they're like, you made that one gay, right? Like, nope, that's gonna be a very interesting person. <laughs> I was thinking, but. Uh, Tangent's nice. gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and by the way, thank you for running to Old Navy uh, for your outfit today. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Ownage. So, Crap, zoom in. this Can I just say something about sexy. this shirt because yeah. it's a nice shirt. I learned this last night with my, I was with my parents, and they explained to me the different the difference because they said, "Oh, we need." We need undershirts for Pesach. They're coming with me to the Bahamas. Always need new gear for Pesach. Right, always got to get a different new body gear. at that. Point. Always. <laughs> so your father needs undershirts. I'm taking notes here, by the way. <laughs> now I've never, I haven't heard the word undershirt since my parents said undershirt mm -hmm. 40 years ago, and I said undershirt. You mean like a t-shirt? No, no, no. A t-shirt. You don't know this. You get it at Radio Shack. A t-shirt <laughs> is something that can be colorful like this shirt is a t-shirt yeah. is white and undershirts I, always white did you know helpful. that because that's you helpful. put it under you you put, that's prince harry that's very oh, helpful that's that it's white I love the harry. that's bias you, but yeah you, wait, put, is, you, you put heard your, this before you put, I, I wear undershirts oh, you put your every show over your undershirt look at the name over your undershirt yeah. undershirts yeah. Yeah. you've heard the you difference between an undershirt and a t-shirt i've i've intuited it undershirt undershirt has got to be only a jewish thing it's got to be a jewish because it's a tzitzis thing it's a tzitzis it's suits it's what other kid wears a suit Suit every wore, every since well, you're in the age body? of comfort now. Button-down shirts feel like undershirts right. now. Yeah. Back the, in the day, you needed to wear something no, under there, I'm otherwise saying, your nipples would shape off. Sits this on your you know? body. It was terrible back in the day. Sits this on your body, it feels very uncomfortable. So then He's they always have, playing to that point one percent who know what sits this are. <laughs> this is where undershirts are a thing. Sits this okay, on your body. Um, Can you say that again? Sits this on your body. Wait, 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 wait. We that's have a, that's to talk about you. We will. What was your point? What was your point? And then we're gonna get to Was that when you shift? I find that the people who last. In my experience so far, in the game of show business, entertainment, music, comedy, whatever, mm -hmm. the people who are 
who who put the craft and the process and right. love what they do before some sort of Correct. arbitrary idea of fame. Right. They that is a result of the of the work they're putting in. The fame comes and it goes and it comes right. and it goes, but they love what they're doing while they're doing it. They're winning all the way through because otherwise what? You've achieved these some some goals that people look at you and go, "Oh my god, you're on curb. Oh my right. god, that's so cool." But you're actually on curb over a season and it probably feels a bit different than you ever expected it to feel. I'd, I'd imagine. Like when you're actually finally there, there's this like surreal thing where it's like, It's surreal. It's rarefied you know? air to be on the set. I said to Larry, I you said, know? "I went over to my god, just want you to know this is like Disneyland, yeah. except you get to hang with Walt. Right. And he laughed at that. I go, you're Walt, and so you don't wait on any of the lines, because you're with Walt, who mm -hmm. created all the characters yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and this whole theme park that we're mm -hmm. playing in. And, you know, you got your, your, your buddy, whatever. Anyway, it was a whole mm -hmm. analogy, but I go, it's fascinating to just be on a set Behind of the something curtain. you wanted for 20 years. Like when I would be a kid and I would watch SNL, I just wanted to jump into the TV and sit yeah. behind Update Desk and just do a bit. Did it feel amazing or did it feel like hard to define? Like No, it felt euphoric. Yeah. And also I wasn't nervous, which was so weird. Because I had met Larry a few times before and stories, that's a whole yeah. other story. Yeah, I want to ask you about yeah, that. Yeah, that's a whole other story. That's another seven-hour podcast. <laughs> but, But... When you're with Larry, it's always a bit. Mm -hmm. It's always just back and forth. So I felt like I had already been on Curb, mm -hmm. except this time I'm with Larry and there happened to be three cameras and a whole crew of 100 people. So if you just tune becomes, that out. It becomes demystified, though, I would imagine. Yeah. You're like on the set. It's like, oh. Well, it's just weird when you're sitting there and there's literally Abbott and Costello, <laughs> right? It's like Larry and Jeff yeah. are Abbott and Costello, these iconic images and they're not on your TV, they're in front of you, and you're riffing with them. Right. And I always liken it to tennis with McEnroe. You hit the ball to him, he hits it harder back, so now you can hit it even harder, mm -hmm. and you know, you're know you playing better because you're with the best. Yeah. His improv, you know, improv skills are like yeah. right. off the charts. Mm -hmm. And you get like one sentence, and then the rest is, yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you just go. Build it. But uh, let's, let's talk about Wait, you for wait, a minute. Can I ask one more yeah. question, yeah. Just and then we're gonna get fully to Ami? I heard a story on a podcast about how you got onto curb? You listen to podcasts, <laughs> and I don't, I don't remember, the, I don't remember outdoors. the details. <laughs> yeah, but I, but I want to hear from you. You were like, you were like pretty um, aggressive. Yes. About like reaching out and yeah. like, I and I, I mean this really in the most complimentary way because it's yeah. something I need to learn. But being like, this is something I want. 100%. I'm gonna, I'm, and I'm gonna ask for it. A hundred. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without getting into the whole story, because that literally is an hour yeah. story that I'm saving for like a real podcast, like mm. Rogan or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> I tell you, got Ellie. I'll be Rogan. <laughs> it's old, crazy man. Rogan has a buy shirt from Old Navy. <laughs> Imagine just like for twenty years, just wanting something. Yeah. Knowing Sorry. like you feel like you could be a part of this. In fact, one of the biggest compliments I ever got was from a friend's father, big prominent doctor in L.A., and he goes, uh, "I watched you on Curb." He goes, "Not only were you like hilarious and amazing," he goes, "But it was like that was your chevra." Like you fit in. That, you belong. That's, you belong there. That's your crew. And I go. That's how I feel. Like mm -hmm. I feel like I belong with Jeff and Susie and mm -hmm. Larry. And I. You feel like you and Richard Lewis. Like those are my people. Mm -hmm. And and JB. Yeah. Not just, just not just because they're Jews. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like these are my people. I just want to be with them and riff with them all day. And then my son got in. Brandon got into Curb at like fifteen, sixteen. So this is like over five years ago. And he just turns to me, he goes, Daddy. <laughs> he goes, Daddy, you should be on this show. And I'm like, you know, in my head, I went, yeah, you know, to him, I said, yeah, yeah, maybe one day. But in my head, I went, I'll never, you know, mm. it's impossible. Yeah. You just, it's impo you just have to be whatever. So I couldn't get an audition for the show. I would call my manager and go, Curb is doing another season. Get me. Oh, well, you're on their casting list. I was on their casting list for years. Couldn't even get an audition. But that's also just a way to stop you from nagging them. Right? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. leave me alone. <laughs> and then I just woke up on my birthday one day and I just turned to my wife. Oh, first I thought I was getting all these nice texts and emails. Have you read that? And then I was like, oh, my God, I have so much work I have to do ahead of me now, <laughs> returning all these emails and text. This is work. And then I thought of the bit that, that Larry did about how I hate birthdays because you're just working all day, returning calls, returning emails. Mm -hmm. I just want to relax on my birthday. And I woke up and I went, looking at these texts, and I thought of that bit, and I went, God, I love Larry so much. You know what? I'm going to go visit him today for my birthday. That's going to be my birthday gift to me. I'm going to go to his office and just visit him. I turned to my wife. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going to say hi to Larry David. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. 
I don't have a meeting. I'm just going to go. I know where his office is. I'm just going to drive there. She goes, you're crazy. You're going to get arrested. And that's a whole hour story. But the point is, I said, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I am not going to wait for the opportunity. You have to go and get opportunity. You have to make opportunities. So I just drove there. And when you, you know, you pull up and they go, I go, they go, what are you doing? I go, I, uh, I'm here to see Larry David. And they go, do you have an appointment? And you go, yes. Right this way, park here. <laughs> and then you're walking around and then you finally find it. And it's all, again, it's a whole story. But by the time I sat there on the couch and told him why I'm there and he got a kick out of that. And his first question to me was, wait, so, so you parked somewhere? Where did you park? Like, yeah, I, I parked like blocks because you couldn't even, whatever. Anyway. So it's quietly pushing security. Like yeah, Mr. he's Burns. quietly pushing. <laughs> Did he get a kick out of it? Because yeah, you showed me a picture. He was like, he got no. He got That's such a. He was just like, take a picture of everything. He's like, mm. he got such a kick out of it that we made it like a, 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 a yearly, yearly thing. annual thing. And then finally, I just said to him straight out, I said, this show is so iconic and important to comedy. I have to be a part of it. And I said this to Jerry when I was doing a terrible sitcom for like the WB network, but it was on the same lot as Seinfeld. And it was across, the studios were across from each other. Mm. And um, I would always run away from my horrible sitcom and just hang out at Seinfeld. And I would just be with the writers in the writer's room. It's like we're at the wedding table, you're at the wrong seat. You're like, I'm yeah, going to hang was, out with I my friends. The wrong <laughs> table. They Maybe put me at it. the wrong yeah. table. No, I have to say, it's the stack. It wasn't stacked. Okay. Stacked was Steve Levitan, who's a great writer, went on to WB. create... Um, uh, Modern Family. Mm. This was a terrible show that no one's ever heard of. So there's no bother, don't, no point in mentioning. Mm. But I would run away, hang with you know Jerry and, the, and his writers. That's where I met like Jeff Schaefer and everything. And Jeff Schaefer runs Curve. That's mm. why when the door opened that first day to Curve, and I was ready to get arrested, Jeff turned around and went, "Elon, mm. what are you doing here?" It's I'm all like, you need. Funny story. Yeah, it's <laughs> all you need. And he goes, "Oh, come back, say hi." But um, so I would always go hang out, and and then Jerry would ask me to do impressions in front of the writers, and it was always like, "Okay, this is." This is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. And I said to Larry, I go, after hanging, you know, with Jerry all those times, I said, this is the greatest show in the history of television. If I could just say a line, if I could be a part of it where I went, yeah, I was on Seinfeld. So he went, okay. And then he called George Shapiro and the manager, the producers, and they're like, well, there's no, in, in the last episode, which Larry wrote, there are no speaking parts for a, a guy like you. It's mm -hmm. just the cast and then whatever. And then a, and they go, but... The opening scene of the last episode is in the diner, and we're going to populate the diner with like the president of NBC and Rob Reiner and the head of Castle Rock goes, do you want to be in that? And I go, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. Just be at the last mm -hmm. Seinfeld and be an extra? Yeah, I don't need a word, anything. And then the, there was a funny story where they gave me the role of I had to walk in, and the opening shot of the last episode, I walk in, and they go, you walk into the diner, you just get gum, you pretend you're paying for it, and then you walk out. And I did that. And I walk in, it's like, action! It's the first thing, and everyone's there, it's exciting. Jerry just did like 10 minutes, everyone's so hyped up, it's the <laughs> last, uh, it's like, action! And I go, okay, so walk in, get the gun. <laughs> and there's nothing more terrifying than being an extra. Lines are easy. Yeah. Extra, it's like, you just don't want to look like you're acting, and you're like miming It's everything. a layup, and missing a layup is and horrible. missing a layup is horrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, action, I walk in, and I, I hear, boom! <laughs> The door slams behind me. And? And it was, I went, <laughs> oh my, I just ruined the first take of the last episode of Seinfeld. And then I went and got my gun. But they, like, you could see, like, the actors sort of just, like, went like that, but they didn't miss a step. And they kept doing the scene. And then, like, the assistant director comes over me and is going, try not to slam the door <laughs> this take. And I was just, like, very gentle. Like, who knew that you just, I just walked in yeah. and then the door, boom. Anyway. So I said to Larry, if I could just be an extra even, even an extra, and cut to, I was in one scene in season 10, nailed the scene, and he's such a mensch, he called me, and he was like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, don't even. No, it, it, you know, and I was like, oh, God. And he goes, it's cut for time. Mm -hmm. And he goes, we were both great in the scene, but when we run 10 minutes long, any clip any any even bit any fat thing. any fat not only fat but it's if it's a bit they won't stop for a bit unless it's part of moving Side the story, story forward yeah. right, right. it's got to move the story forward and he, larry had to get to the doctor's office mm -hmm. you didn't have to stop in the waiting room which was my little scene and so and they when they're looking it. for cuts they cut mm -hmm. it and, and he goes i'm gonna find you something next season and i'm like how likely is another season he's like uh likely found me 
two episodes of the next season, killed them, and then they invited me back for a third episode. And that's how I had my little recurring. But that was years in the mix. Yeah. You're saying you're building this on a mountain of kind of disappointments, rejections, but they're yes. really yeah. actually yes, but, it's still building. You're building a foundation. But, and, yeah. it, but, and it also all that all that aggressive all that aggression comes from a place of love. Persistence, of like, it's love. Like, persistence I, is the next. Nice yeah, no persistence, right? Funny no, it comes from love. Though. Like when I yeah. burst into yeah. his office, I was like jokes and funny yeah. and impressions, and now I just go in there and just do impressions. For like an hour with him, and he just loves impressions. Has it ever did. backfired though when you've tried that on people? Where are you? Yeah, you know, like can... Elon. Yeah, Modi. Coming in a little hot. <laughs> Wait, nothing on that? <laughs> what? Yeah, Modi. <laughs> <laughs> Has it ever backfired? You know, when you try to do impressions and you try to entertain people. All right. It's... When Alpha Wishes came out, I, they came out I, Jewish. I told oh, you, here he goes again. I told <laughs> you watching that episode yeah, with the Body like, Podcast was watching. It's like watching well, Uncut Gems. My heart was just, <laughs> my heart was so. I was. Elon was I'm stressful. sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to entertain people. <laughs> Elon Musk got shot in the head at the end. It was a pretty <laughs> epic podcast. It is. Actually. It was epic. For better let's or talk worse. About, All right, let's, let's talk, talk about, about you. Ame. Let's also oh. talk about the idea of obscure impressions because okay. we we touched right. on it. So I always went. Let's do Charles Grodin. Let's do people that nobody does. I do a Jeffrey Tambor. Do you even know who that is? Arrested is that Arrested Jeffrey Tambor the the dad of Arrested Development? Transparent. And the Hank, of course, from Larry Sanders. Right. So yeah. it's <laughs> oh oh no oh good God Larry. <laughs> nobody does a Jeffrey Tambor, yeah. and when you get to do that, again you find you crack the code, you find yeah. the hook, and it's so much fun. Mm. So, which brings us to you. To me, we're gonna get we're getting to you right now. I have been fascinated by you. So I meet you. You're like a kid. How old are you? 15, 18? When you met me, yeah. down the street in Vacation Village. Yeah, I was a ch I was but a child. Here's, but a child. Yeah. You, you said to your family, "Doesn't he have the perfect nose?" I said that. I was <laughs> like jealous was of good noses. Yeah, I was like seven. <laughs> I was a. I, I was I, my, when I was born. My parents bought a place in Vacation Village, so I was a little child. Yes, you were a child. A child yeah. And you were you were just talking to him, just as a little child. Him. You're like boy. Messages. Come here. <laughs> but, and One then, day we're gonna do a podcast together, <laughs> and I'm gonna hate them. Yeah. yeah. So yes, yeah, as a small kid, it's called and grooming. Then, grooming. I yeah, think. And is then the term. I run into you later on, <laughs> as an adult. Yeah. And you have this knack for impressions that nobody does. You start doing people that most people don't know, like a rabbi of a shul, like Rabbi Muskin. Get, a absolutely me? not. Totally, totally. A lot, of, a lot of people know me, actually. They just go to Yik. That is scary. So <laughs> I go, wait, that's like unbelievable. Mm. And I just love, because like I would also do a, uh, you know, Rabbi Marvin Heyer? <laughs> sure. He's the head of the Simon Wiesenthal Center. And Rabbi Heyer. <laughs> the is, center. Right. The thing with Rabbi Heyer <laughs> is because he, he, he does these gala dinners <laughs> every year where he has like the biggest stars in the world, yes. you know, from whatever. He had Chris Rock host once. Mm -hmm. He always has like a Scarlett Johansson. So, so he's in that world of LA where he's like doing these, he won an Oscar. He's in nonprofit Jewish showbiz. But also <laughs> sent him always an email loves once. to drop big stars' names. Sure. So he'd be saying like, I was having lunch with Tom Cruise and we were sitting there and he said that the Simon Wiesenthal Center is the most important center. Anyway, the point is... And I then, recognize that from your tissue book. Then, yeah, that's exactly then he took a laxative. I'm, I'm also doing him in my Christmas tree bit. Mm. When you light the left to right, but like, yeah. That's what that's from. Yeah, you, it's, you it's all Marvin the, Higher. the Gemara is Shout Rabbi. out. Yeah. So I see you doing Rabbi Muskin. Then you do, there was a few others. Who else do you do? Who else? There was no, like early on, like people like no one knows. You were doing other people. And I went, which world? I mean, are we talking like the Jewish, Jewish world? Yeah. Or, are we talk, uh... or even local LA people. You just do friends uh, and family. Yeah. And yeah. I was Parents. just fascinated by you that you could do this so perfectly. And then I was a little sad for you. Mm. I was sad because I was like, here's a guy with this gift. God bestowed this gift upon him. And I don't even know what you're doing at the time. And I didn't even know you were in music, whatever. But I'm like, you're not using... I told you a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're not using... We had a few coffee bean run-ins, but it... <laughs> you're, as, as your friend Jordan would say, you're not using your gifts. How you're not. Is... What was that? You're not. So you then... Don't... Yeah, you're not. Right. Your unrecognized potential. But now I'm still fascinated by you, yes, right? Yes, keep going. And then all of a sudden, I see you doing Gary V. Now... If not for like one buddy going, you got to check this guy out on the internet. He's like motivational speaker. He's like really smart and good mm. stuff. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll follow him. Mm. I'm like, oh, what a character he mm. is, whatever. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I see you doing Gary V. And I go, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. This is like up there. 
top five impressions in the history of impressions. Yep. Up there with like <laughs> <laughs> with Jay Moore's Colin Quinn, which is the greatest thing you'll ever see. <laughs> I mean, like with like, you know, Caliando's John Matt. There's like yeah. top five greatest impressions ever. You're in that oh, for you. Gary Vee. And I'm like, oh my God. And you're thank actually God. doing it mm. on Instagram. So it's public. Mm. And then and but like, but nobody knows Gary Vee. It's weird. But like you said, that's the key to do the niche thing. Mm -hmm. And then those people will find I'd you. prefer to go deep, not wide. <laughs> I mean, how do you even say how do you even discover Gary Vee? And how do you say I want to do him or does it just come to you? Because that people always ask me, do you work on it or does it come? Usually it just comes to you. Yeah, it's less intentional than you right. think. It's less It's more about following the the heat a little bit. Mm -hmm. What happens, I think what happened was for a long time I looked at social media when I was doing, you know, so I'm a musician too and we, we would post like social media stuff. It, I was always looking at it as the commercial. Like mm -hmm. go on social media and broadcast. Like the mm -hmm. way you said it kind of is icky. You're like, come to my show here. Come right. to this. Got this new thing coming out. And as I started using it um, through TikTok, I began to discover that, oh, wait a minute. Social media is not the commercial. It's the show. It is the show. That was a big turning point for me. That was it the Kiddush. It is everything. So I didn't discover that yet until I just said, okay, TikTok's this thing. It's not a household name yet, but I'm seeing it. And everyone's like, yo, you got to... You got, you got to try TikTok. You got to see what this is. And I was kind of early to it. Not like the beginnings beginnings, but before it was everywhere and ubiquitous, I downloaded TikTok and I started saying, wait, what should I do here? Let me just post daily, five days a week, something funny. The, I was doing some music stuff too, but impressions were easy. Low, you know, not much barrier to actually making something. I throw up an impression. I was doing anybody. I would do a Gilbert Gottfried. I'd do, uh, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Whatever it would be. But Bernie the Sanders. The people that no one knows. Jordan Peterson. So then one day in my car, I just threw it up and said, oh, I came across like Gary Vee on my TikTok feed, right? Mm -hmm. They were just like, like, you know, talking about Uber, right? So like I throw <laughs> up my- the greatest thing. I throw up my phone and I do the Gary Vee. I was like, I'm just so sick of fucking 20, 40 year olds like complaining that they're not killing it, right? If you want to win, move to Louisiana and start and start a peanut butter company, right? Like <laughs> the blueberries, ever. blueberries, right? You know, start a, start a peanut butter the company. Greatest I throw this. it and, and my thumb is going like this. I'm like, yeah, I can fine tune this. I don't know if I've cracked it yet. I got a piece of it. But I threw it up on TikTok, and then I had a, like a TikTok moment where like I refreshed five grand, five, you know, a couple of hundred views, a couple thousand views, oh. all within 15 minutes, 14,000, 20,000, 50,000. By the end of the weekend, a couple hundred thousand views. I'm like, whoa. Nuts. Then Barstool Sports like messages me and says, hey, are you the, is this the original like creator? They feature it on their page. Long story wow. short, I went from like not having any feeling like I had any sort of audience online to feeling like I had an audience. And then wow. that, and then it's like, and then, an Instagram creator from like Fuck Jerry, you know that account, mm -hmm. like gathering memes and stuff like that. Like, I have some advice for you if you want it. The like, Godif is what we call it. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, what was it? What In was the advice? The advice was like, I was ready to be like, okay, so you've seen the Gary V one video. Check out all this other stuff. I also do this, and right. I make me. But he's like, lean into this. Wow. Because you think a lot of people have seen this. No one has seen this. Right. Lean into what's hot. Like it's hard enough to find something that really works and like channel your creativity into this. Wow. Because while you think it's going to get old, like it won't for a long time. And you became the guy. And that was a good guy. piece of advice. It was sage advice. It was I was like, great advice. You know, and I was like, you know, you have a hit song, play the hit song. Yes. Get, have it get circulation. So I started saying, let me do as many bits and funniness. And let wow. me drain this as much as I can of what funny I could find in this character. Wow. And Jordan Peterson came from the same story where I did it on YouTube, where I threw up a YouTube clip of just a random one minute sitting in my car before I went inside a Jordan Peterson impression. And he was like kind of off the public scene for a little yeah. while. And that blew up on YouTube. So that started bringing me a YouTube audience. And the different platforms responded different in, in different ways to these impressions. And that sort of took me, I, I sort of followed the heat a little bit. Right. I wasn't like, I want to be a Gary Vee impersonator. It was like, no. no. Of course. And then I started putting it into sketches and bits. And, and then the like Harry that. thing. And that's the that's other a, thing. That's a sort of a newer one. And that's yeah. amazing. But you don't just do the impression. You write great jokes Thank with you. it. It's always funny and impression. I think a it's a party of... trick without the meat of writing. I, yeah, I think there's. It's like shredding on a guitar. If you get on stage and you go, look what I can do. Everyone's going to be like, cool. And after a minute, they're going to be like, but you need a song. Right. You need you need real substance behind these of things, course. and then they enhance yeah. that. If you don't write things to it, and, and the thing about the other ones is like there's an improvisational element too. But that's kind of also there's a writing component. You have a foundation of the character. Yeah. And then the, the question is: so now you found a lot of success. Yeah. What is the goal? Like, where are you going with this? Like, again, for me, it was SNL. Da, da, da. Right. Like, what's the goal? It's, it's honestly, I don't. I don't think about that. I think about process. 
Um, That's amazing. I think. By the way, I. <laughs> Michael's so sick of the Gary no, I, no, you know what? Michael came with me to VCon. No, oh, yeah. I, I took him. I, I, I love Ami, Tell- and I and I think he's a brilliant impressionist. I, I don't hear the Gary V. Oh, that's crazy. I, I actually perfect. don't like the Gary V impression. It's okay, I don't care about Michael's opinions. I know, I, you know, you know, you know, you know I'm a big supporter. Yeah. It's, it's, he likes Jordan Peterson more. Yeah, Jordan and Peterson. And my grandfather. I think, I think he's great. Yeah. <laughs> no, every grandfather. Of course, Elon, you know that he did the voices there. <laughs> Very good. That's ah. a, <laughs> that must be an exact impression. Of course. Of yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's up. I, for whatever reason, it doesn't hear, land with me. Hear, you don't hear. Like, that I, it I know Gary pretty Michael's well. Michael's hearing impaired. It's, you know when you know it's a perfect impression. <laughs> Not only is the vo- voice and the mannerisms perfect, it's when you can say exactly what he or she would say yeah. and riff. Right. And that's what the you do. What you say. Yeah. Is a funny version. And when the guy, and when the guy, like, eh. and when the guy doing the impression invites you to his conference <laughs> to do it, right. that's yeah. so clearly you, you're you're in the minority. There, yeah, Michael. no, I, I'm, I'm. He admits that. I, obviously, but he was at VCon. Right. That was obviously, wrong. It's, obviously, it's a hit. But I yeah, did no, Perm stick on steroids for the masses. VCon yeah. Perm stick on steroids. That's, like you said, you felt you felt like right as rain on curb. When I was at VCon, I'm like, this is where I'm supposed to be right now. Like that's called that's beating the game. Like yeah. imagine aiming at a target and then I opened VCon conference with Gary. Unbelievable. <laughs> it was pretty wild. Are you trying to say yeah. you're gonna be on the crown doing Harry stuff? Uh, oh, uh, I don't know. Know. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say about. But the next thing yeah. you're saying is first yeah. where this all leads to. Yeah, it's, there's sort of an unknown as far as what social media, like what does a follower mean as a support? Like how do you translate that? Right. But ultimately, like the idea of patronage, the idea of building an audience that can support you, that can fill rooms for when I develop my hour well, of 45 the minutes. that's the thing you have to do. Yeah. Because you're naturally good at, as, at stand-up. Right. So now you have the following. All mm-hmm. you need to do is build the act. Correct. And you'll be that's where I'm at. theater. That's well, exactly can, where I'm at. Like, you, there are people without acts who have, like, a million followers and sell out theaters. Mm-hmm. And then they, like, just sing or say hi or do Q&As or whatever. Right. Like, you could actually... So have, I'm looking at, a, you know, my... Look, it's for me right now, it's also... It's stage time. Like, stage time, stage time, same time. I don't want to be in front of a bit, an audience that I'm not ready for. Right. I don't want to be up there. Well, that's why we didn't ask be, you to do Chosen yet. Right. And not... Okay. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that, yeah, that's why. Oh, this is good. Honestly, this. honestly, now let me ask you this. Honestly, yeah. for the better. I like that when I when I when something doesn't work out, I'm like, okay, the next time I'll be even more primed and ready for it and more comfortable with it. Like right. that's that's great. But um, but you're so versatile and you have the music. So the, the music, the comedy it. thing, it's like that synthesis of what that all becomes is all being developed right now, and I'm patient with it because I don't want. I just want the stage time to work out comedy stuff in front of an audience, right. and then. I have like this loop sampling stuff and stuff that I do that's like and how all a part of it. There's wife, like a Bo Burnham. The wife mm. handle everything because it's so interesting because <laughs> she could see it as like, oh, what are you doing? Right. You're just messing around and you're doing dumb videos right. and what are you doing? But now you can't deny success. You right. can't deny, what do you have? How many thousands of followers do you have? Um, TikTok is two two hundred twenty thousand. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So you can't deny that. Now right. that's success. Yeah. And now she can't like frown <laughs> upon you just goofing off in your car or your office and like, what are you doing? Help with the kids. I'm working. And that's not a, you know, and you're just doing stupid voices. <laughs> Has there been any recognition and acknowledgement of, oh my God, even the comedy? I know you do well with music and da-da-da and you're Well, my wife will do like with anything is like, uh, when I'm doing funny bits, like, there's like a bit of a, what is this? But then she'll like give me suggestions behind the scenes. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and I'm right. sure your wife, after a show, like what's the uh, post game with uh, with your wife on like, she does she critique in a, in a good way? Like you missed this, you could have done this better. Yeah, and it's irritating. <laughs> well, that, that's but why you, when, I you, mean, when he was saying earlier, he said, but people say, oh, you know, I don't want to swell your head, but you're doing great. I'm just thinking, of your, I know you're thinking to yourself, Listen, I, I have, have a plenty of negativity, <laughs> or or just like no, but holding on the you, holding right you to now. your highest standard and making sure that you're focused and centered and like no, and not just yeah, like getting lost. Yeah, but there's also it. a shift of like first ten years coming to every set yeah. and being the cheerleader and supporter, right. and then like oh yeah, I'll see you when you get back. Right, right. You know, but uh, she's still obviously supportive mm-hmm. and was never like doubtful of anything. It's mm-hmm. just always like. Always that cheerleader, but it, it became from rah rah to like yeah, yeah okay go to work and then come back and then it's like if if she'll she'll come to like a chosen mm-hmm. fest because that's like yeah. a big thing and I'll yeah. even bring the kids whatever right. and I literally the last chosen fest I came off stage and everyone's like amazing set oh my god you kill again right and then the wife is just like so are we going to the uh, I'm like oh n- nothing mm-hmm. not even like a good set. You know, you killed it up there. That's why I said I said the the I think the Gamara yes I'm gonna bring it back in that you have a 
two pockets. One pot in pocket, the note says, I am nothing nothing but dust and ashes. The other one says, the world was created for me, just to keep you in check. I feel like the <laughs> Jewish parent is, in one pocket it says, I make six figures a year. The other pocket says, my daughter pooped in the tub. Like, just right. to keep you <laughs> right. just completely... Yeah. Just in check, so you don't. Get your or if you're smoke. married, both pockets say you're a schmuck, <laughs> and go take out the. Also, no, you know, no, the, the no, thing is, what I, I, will, what I will tell you that I think any anybody like when you're like comedy, you're either the king or the clown. If you know, like, right. when you get on stage, and you're if you're a musician and you've been putting your time and your years, like music is protection, like a little bit from the audience in some way. You can go up on stage, you play a set that you're happy with. People connect to it. Some people don't. You could kill, you could not. But like, even if you don't. You know, that's okay. You don't like walk away. Your ego's kind of intact. But with comedy, like people personalize it to the comedian. Even oh, yeah. though you're channeling jokes and humor, it's much more audience dependent and much more of a thing where like, you know, you want to make sure that you are yeah. not coming. That's off why of- I never understood why Frank Sinatra said I was nervous before every single show. I'm like, mm-hmm. why? You just have to sing. Yeah. Yeah. Same ones. The same <laughs> the the my way. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, I'm nervous. What, what maybe, is he nervous about? There's 10,000 people dying to just see him stand there right. and then just sing a couple of songs that you're reading off the prompter. Mm-hmm. That's nerve-wracking to him? As opposed to a bunch of Jews going, we saw him last year. Yeah, we saw <laughs> this. Does he have any new stuff? But also, no, it's just that the way they judge it is different. They're like, they judge it as you. Like, the, that is you. Not like, right. I didn't like the song. They're like, right. I didn't like you. And yeah. it's if, very it, personal. If, if a joke kind of bombs, it like, you feel the sting right. instantaneously and then mm-hmm. you got to work through it. And season yeah. comics can sort of work through silence in very healthy ways. Ways and yeah, and no, and no, it's it's the, we're, we're door to door salesmen, yeah, but our product is. <laughs> You, yeah, I, you're just selling yourself. I, I, I think, I think your stand up is gonna take off when mm-hmm. you start selling you more than the voices well, and that, the bits. That, that was the and, evolution. And you can do that all, I... and you can do all of it together, but yeah. like, yeah, but still projecting, like, yeah. Hey, listen, that was the exact evolution that I experienced. Mm-hmm. I remember when my when my brother said to me, he goes, "That was the first time I ever saw you speak mm-hmm. on stage," and this is like. Eight years into yeah. doing stand-up, because all I did was hide behind impressions. Mm. But when you do start speaking, and then you develop a voice and a point of view, mm. that's when things really start like clicking. Mm. And it's hard, especially from our community. You have kids in school, like mm. you're part of the community. Like being vulnerable publicly is like dangerous. And also being know? edgy and dirty. That was the thing too. Right. A lot of the Gary Vee stuff lent itself to stuff that was pretty, you know, v- risky. Very risky. Yeah. And I took that risk, and like I, I sort of am reevaluating some was of Was not fun for you. <laughs> you know. That, you know I didn't get to people were like people enjoyed it because when something is funny it has a very disarming oh, yeah. like yes. even if something I, I have rabbis who said like I, I watch your stuff like you know all when I'm in the time. bathroom all the I'm like time. interesting <laughs> like they say I don't want I, you know I, I watch listen I've seen I've seen keep right. going keep going like you know like when you do a show for a bunch of chazim like say whatever you want right you know they, there, there's an element to that that if it's funny it tends to it tends to be okay yeah but at the end of the day when your kids get older and you kind of reevaluate like I don't know how you deal with that your kids have gotten older and seen you as a I mean, your stuff is fairly on the it's cleaner side. Fairly too. clean, but I have some edgy, dirty right. stuff, and I just tell them not to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Ultimately, they learn it all. Yeah. And Never park, yeah. okay, guys. Never park. Yeah. Yeah. Parking. <laughs> what is he talking about when he does his parking bit? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Well, they become adults and people of their own, and you have to accept that. Exactly. Um, mm. You know. Are so. we? Are we wrapping up? Can now? I? Can I just say something? Yes. Yeah. You're an excellent podcaster. Thank you. By the way, <laughs> that was a good. That was, was a those very great, great questions, and those are great, great questions. I should Tom. have my own podcast. Should if think I about didn't it. Resent podcast. I would have. <laughs> just a remember, podcast. social media is not the commercial. No, because it's the I'm, show. I'm naturally curious, and I'm much more curious about you and your journey and mm. how you discover this talent, and then you start doing it. That was fascinating. Then on my I'm own. Sure, story, you can relate. It's the same thing. I could totally relate. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and you were also good. Like, um, I, like I have a hard time cutting on me off, but you're really good at it. Mm-hmm. I could like, cut you, off. You, got, you guys went like toe I to could toe. Cut off anyone. Any, any quick time. impression off while we but to wrap up on a fun quick little game, Michael? Off? You could because say because I held back. <laughs> oh, should I throw should I throw ones out? Yeah, let's see. Elon can be someone. I'll be ben, someone. Benicio we'll... del Toro. Oh, that's you. No. That's, okay. No. 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 Let's go with more obscure. Benicio del Toro. Right. Howard Stern interviewing. <laughs> All I got was Wolf. Uh, Jordan Peterson and Howard Stern. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, this is very exciting, Robin. Let me tell you something. Mm, pretty good. This Jordan Peterson. I mean, he's a know-it-all. He thinks he knows everything about everybody, Robin. Jordan, how are you? Well, well you know. How are you? It depends on what you mean by how and are and you. You know, I don't really like the way the question is formulated. It's like, well, 
I can tell you how my day is on a typical day. You know, I have young men coming up to me and, you know, they're telling me I've improved their relationship with their father. And, you know, that's really something. Do you that's have Artie Lang? You got Artie Lang? I don't do an Artie. Artie, I don't do an Artie. Oh, he'd be good. I so, the only guy is, is Seth Rogen. It's both of my nasal impressions. You got to be very nasal and Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have kids and I don't want kids. I don't want kids. It doesn't like, seem that fun. <laughs> it, it, it seems like a lot of work. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. So you can do a, a lot, lot Canadian. Yeah, a lot of work. A lot. <laughs> it's Canadian and nasal. Mm. Um, who else can we do? Oh, you know who I love doing We did a Trump stage? off before. And you're Trump, doing... you've added a little growl to it, which is... Yeah, awesome. we added a lot of growl. A lot. We added a lot of growl. Do you know what I've known? A friend of mine showed me... It's the... Yeah, the lips. Uh, we're it's doing a lot, folks. Then, we're doing a lot. Teleprompter always, Trump, and then it, he breathes in through his nose, through his nose, and he closes his mouth, mm. and then mm. sometimes he whispers, sometimes he whispers, and then sometimes he's very loud. Yeah, that's how he so, snores. Great, great, so great. Uh, and when he's sleeping at night, folks. Yeah. Teleprompter Trump, very sensual. You know who I like doing now? Mm. President Zelensky. Go ahead. Oh, the deep Zelensky. Yeah, People say I look like him. I get to you look a little like him. And that's all he does. He just looks into the camera. You don't understand a word, but it's riveting yeah. and captivating because you just stare at him and he's just like, <laughs> and he's just like, and then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Biden is tough, huh? I can't crack the Biden. I can't crack the Biden, and there's a couple of guys on Instagram that are doing it perfectly. Yeah, it's you can fr- tell Biden's hard because they had to bring in Jim Carrey from SNL to do it. Yeah. Poorly. yeah. Kyle it's Dunnigan, even, yeah. crushing. By the way, I'm not even going to work on a Biden because how much more time is he? <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing to do is crack an impression and the guy dies. Yeah. yeah. So you got, how's your God forbid, how's your I'm DeSantis? joking. How's your DeSantis? The DeSantis we got to work yes, on. DeSantis and, uh Yeah, Trump's going to... Richie Torres eventually. Trump's going to be Trump's going to be in the spotlight, bit. so you got plenty of that. Plenty of that. But I again, Trump is one of those guys... I do because it's fun Mm -hmm. and because you almost like have to, but he's one of those guys that everybody does. So there's nothing exciting to the audience. It's like, we've never heard this before. However, on Trump, there's different angles to a Trump impression. Yes. And it's not like the it's not like the impression like Bush, where everyone just goes, hey, hey I'm Trump right, Bush. Hey, right. And it's the same thing. There's like Alec Baldwin, and then there's other guys who are like cracking right. different parts of him. Right. And and also again, when you crack the observation, yeah, yeah. so Robert Smigel, who's like one of the great genius comedic writers of all time. Yeah. Who triumph? You know the pu- puppet. He, oh yeah, yeah. He yeah. wrote all of you know him For and me Adam. To yep, yeah, wrote all of Sandler's stuff, and mm. he was one of the best SNL writers. So when someone like him compliments you, you go, "Oh, okay, I guess mm. I'm doing that." All oh, mm. right. And he said, "I love the angle of your Trump, where he says something." that contradicts what he just said three seconds ago. So like, ah, I would yes. be like, you know, the Russians, yeah. they're doing terrific and also some very bad things. And Putin, he's a horrible guy, he's a nasty guy, and we're very close. <laughs> he's always just contradicting what he just said oh, a yeah. few seconds ago. Yeah, so when you bad. find, again, that angle yeah. or the observation, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's you, not just an impression. I was doing working on a Mike Pence at the time, too. Oh, let's like, hear it. It's like, I think it's time for new leadership. You know, this kind of like, I think it's time for new leadership in this country. That's I don't know what actual Mike Pence Mike sounds like. No one knows what he sounds like. So I, 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 we don't know if it's I think I'm very not. proud of what we did in the Trump administration. I'm very proud of what we like, accomplished in 2020. I'm very proud of 2016 and our record. We did a lot, but I think it's time for new leadership. I'm pretty sure Jordan Peterson, I can't think of without thinking of Ami, because I don't know. <laughs> I <hadn't laughs> well, you know, nobody counts. You will. I have heard of him. <laughs> yeah. No, it's I haven't heard of him. But much. don't you feel like, like last night I uh, on stage, I did this. Where did you perform? I, I did. I told the North Shore thing. Oh, right. And I did the the Jackie Mason which I can never do anywhere except mm. at these Jewish events. Yeah. And I love doing Jackie Mason because you you know how it is. You mm. channel them. Yeah. You feel like them. So it's almost like they're there and you're just this vessel and they're there again and you're mm. just channeling it. And he was like one of my favorites. So even when I'm doing him, I'm still enjoying him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I'm not enjoying me. I'm enjoying Jackie Mason. Well, when when it's it. flowing and you're like looking in the mirror and you see that person. Well, you never want to look in the mirror. No, not literally. Like you, you're oh, seeing you, a you figurative see mirror of them. A That's figure, how you do it. That is exactly correct. You are staring at a I, figurative mirror of them. Right. If you ever look in an actual mirror. That's why it's much more mirror, visual. I an mean, impression is, for, is much more visual than much people more. realize. Because people try to do the voice. But you're like, yeah. Mm. I think Frank Caliendo's Bush is so good because he 
Oh my yeah, God, his visual. face is unbelievable yeah. how he contorts it. But the worst thing to do is look in a mirror. Right. But anyway, so I was doing Jackie Mason last night. It was Jackie Mason. Uh, if if uh, Mel Gibson hired Jack, uh, a, a Jewish guy to do play Jesus because Jesus was a Jew. Yeah. Instead of a non-Jew, which he shouldn't have hired. Passion of the Christ. Right. So, so Jackie, <laughs> to tell you the truth, it makes me dashes to think that a person such as myself has to stand up here and die for your sins, Mister. I, I, I got a better idea. Why don't you die for my sins? I'll make you a deal. You die for my sins. I'll die for your sins. But you go first. <laughs> anyway, so it's so fun to just feel like him. Jackie just... Mason was a comedian, or like he was? A... I'm just kidding. <laughs> he was a rabbi. But the problem and is, yes, I went when he died. Know. I went and like as a little tribute. I went, I was I had a set at the cellar and yeah. I went to the cellar and I started doing Jackie Mason and it was just blank stares. Mm. And I went so when the sad. impression bombs, it hurts in a different. No, way. but also it's just sad that Jackie, who was top ten of all time to yes. ever do stand up, nobody knows. Mm. You know, Don Rick, uh, Louis C.K. tells a story. Don Rickles mm. called him over once and like uh, they were out to dinner or something. <laughs> and and you know and and he was he was he was roasting him in in front of all, all of his friends. And Louis C.K. was like, oh my god, I'm getting roasted by Don Rickles. It's amazing. And then he pulls Louis down. And he goes, don't let him forget me. And Don then, Rickles said that to Louis. Yeah, and then Louis goes, and no one remembers who he is. Don Don Rickles. Wow. People I don't remember know. who Don Rickles is. Don Rickles is. is a legend of roast. Yeah, legend. but he 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 cared. But I know he, he, he was scared. He cared about he legacy. Afraid. He was afraid. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you. He had that run. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll yeah, a little bit. I'll tell you this. You know? I'll tell you this. Uh, Julia, she lives next. She lives down the street from me in the Hamptons. Ah, you never call me. But that's also <laughs> the difference with the roast stuff because you could tell he did it from such a like friends of. Of the people. Yeah, you had to be friends with them. And it was, you know, like they say, the Friars, yeah, we yeah. only roast the ones we love. The Jeff Ellie, Ross. speaking of Ellie, wrote my favorite religious Rodney bit. So I do this bit where if Rodney was religious, mm -hmm. and it's all these funny, you know, jokes about like, you know, whatever. Like, oh, I'll tell you, it ain't easy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the holidays were rough, too. I tell you, you know, the holidays were tough. You know, I remember one year the bank foreclosed on our sucker. You know? <laughs> and Ellie wrote my favorite. Can I guess what it is? Yeah. Is it uh, we couldn't afford a mechitza? We just have nope. to close no, our no, that's, yours. that's mine. I the, love that one. But my <laughs> favorite one of all the Rodneys is... Uh, I tell you, my mother never liked me either, you know. I tell you, it was rough with my mother, you know. As a baby, I tried to nurse. She'd push me away and say, hey, you're still flashing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the greatest joke ever. That was Ellie Thank pitching you. me. <laughs> and that was me taking a chance, emailing him, being like, we did a Zoom show together. Yeah. Like a year and a half, two years ago. And like, I was like, hey, great stuff. Love the religious Rodney. Here's a bunch of jokes. I'm going to back away now. And like, here's a bunch of jokes that you may like. It's so funny oh, because it's fun. so, again taking it into your own hands, approaching the guy, just going mm -hmm. up to the guy and doing that. And sometimes it works. Like with me at first, I was like a little resistant. I was like, I write my own stuff. Mm. It's okay. You seem like a nice kid. Mm. I, you know, I don't know you, whatever. And then he just kept it, tenacity and he wouldn't give up. And he kept, and then he would pitch jokes. Like me and Modi were doing stuff together mm -hmm. and he would pitch jokes for both of us and they would like kill. Mm -hmm. And we'd be like, oh, we got to talk to this kid more. Mm -hmm. And I went over to Stephen Wright when I was 15 years old, knowing he was going to be on Letterman. And yeah. I wrote like 20 really great Stephen Wright jokes. And at the time, I was doing him. So mm -hmm. these were jokes that I'm like, oh my God, if Stephen Wright. So I ran over to 30 Rock. He walks in, and he's about to go up and do Letterman. Or he came back, and he just did it. Mm -hmm. And I show up, and I'm like, I, I wrote all these jokes in your voice because I do an impression of you. And he goes, I can't even look at it. And I was like, what? He won't even look at mm -hmm. it. He goes, because he didn't want to get sued. He didn't want to get... And he just like walked away. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at these jokes and went, mm, more for me. <laughs> Well, and to, your, to your credit, we, you know, a lot of the comedian, like, you know, you come across people in the comedy space who get very territorial, yeah. defensive, protective, and you haven't really been like that. There's like a, no, a I'm sense pretty of open. pretty, very supportive, very I'm encouraging. very supportive. I always yeah. am mentoring. Now yeah, it's I, Eli Leonard yeah. and Steph Younger yeah. and all these people that I recognize unbelievable talent. Yeah. I want to like, also, I love hanging out with people like mm. that that are incredibly funny and versatile. It's mm. just fun. It's fun mm. to do voices. I, I've also I've also made sure to say that, like, when I'm not bragging that I know you, that like I'm like you've been nothing but effusive of praise. So and nice. one of the nicest things that you'll always be like, even just now, you gave me a shout out for mm. a couple jokes. And, like, always just such the. I love to give credit where credits due. I hate when people don't give credit and take mm -hmm. all the credit for themselves. Mm -hmm. Everything is you know team effort. I mean and, all of WhatsApp uh, jokes that go viral without the names attached. Right. Yeah, I hate that. <laughs> Rising time. My famous Who's joke. Who's this Christmas tree guy? No, I don't but know. The, wor the worst thing is when for years I was doing the joke, gas prices are so high, even reformed Jews are walking to shul. Mm -hmm. And then you see this meme with oh. no credit, no, no, and it goes viral. And you're like, that's my... 
But again, I had a Han- I have a, every year. I have a Hanukkah joke that goes viral. <laughs> Rabbis rec- recorded themselves telling the joke. They Michael, don't know we, it's. We mine. can go, Michael. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, no, I say that like uh, uh, the Greeks were all about man being in prime physical shape. So on Hanukkah, we eat oily foods to ensure we never become like the Greeks. Funny. And that joke gets. Passed around That's every huge. Hanukkah, the ultimate, like, uh. By the you way, know, I tell you, Hanukkah was tough, too, you know? <laughs> you know I, remember, we got I remember one year I opened up my gift. On the sixth night, it was two more candles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. My mother loved oh, no, me as a kid. Her bath toys were a microwave and a toaster. <laughs> That's a real Rodney joke. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, just, I mean, we're all having fun. Rick Rubin has in his new book, he talks about how, like, real artists aren't creating anything they're just vehicles for ideas to come through and, yes. th- and they're absorbing what's in the ether so he, sa- he said a lot of times you'll see the same idea popping up in a lot of different places because artists are grabbing at the same time for oh, the same things we're, we're like that joke's out there and but but well, you know, well you know. my my solace and this is my super jewish thing to bring it down back to judaism yeah. <laughs> is that, uh, that every year at hanukkah it's always like the, the parsha that comes around is always the yosef story coming out of egypt and paro pharaoh says to Yosef, hey, I heard you tell, he comes out of jail, and he says, I heard you interpret dreams. And Yosef doesn't say, yes, I'm great at it. He says, God does that. I'm just the conduit mm. for it. Wow. So mm. it's a well, Beautiful. little lesson in humility. Yeah. Well, I um, am great at impressions. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the truth is, I've always said that. How do you do impressions? Like, it's a God-given gift. Phil Hartman said, like, I don't know how anybody else doesn't do it, but right. I do it. That's I don't right. know why they can't do it, but I can. Whatever. By the way, crazy story. Three nights ago, I'm doing this benefit for Hatsala, mm-hmm. and I do the religious Rodney bit. And this woman who I've met a few times, and I forgot about this, but I hadn't seen her in like maybe 10 years. She yeah. goes, oh, my God, it, it, it's, it's me. I go, wait, I know you. Goes, I'm Rodney Dangerfield's daughter. And she goes, did Whoa. you see me and then start doing Rodney? I go, I didn't even see you. I just do this as part of my shit. What did she sound me? like? Wow, Elon, that was a great set. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Dad. I really missed that. sounded nothing like that. <laughs> Pretty ironic. That you... All the kids, wow. <laughs> a ironic, beautiful woman. Ironic that you didn't give her any respect. <laughs> <laughs> I gave her no respect. No, I did. She's like, nice. It's just so weird when the daughter of the guy you're doing comes I, over. I did. <laughs> and when I was vending at Cubs games in Chicago, I did Harry Will Ferrell's Harry Carey give it for Harry for Carey's. Widow had it go. Hey, who wants to get crazy? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> yeah, like, we gotta get oh, over yeah, that. Yeah. Those are some uh, curveballs in your set. If you just did that, uh, I think people would be like, What? It's is just wrong a with funny you? voice, just figure it's it like out. Jordan Peterson. Yeah, no one knew, and nah. then still funny. And then you look him up, and then you go, Oh, it's just I'm fun. sorry, but I'm scared. I scare myself so much. Jordan Peterson is like an underground superhero. I've always been surprised when I do it on stage. People, everyone knows. Well, well you know, yeah. that's what Dana Carvey said to me once that that imp- that characters, original characters, <laughs> are impressions of people you know. That's all they are. Right. They're There's impressions a... of people you know, but the audience doesn't know. Right. So all of a sudden, it's an original character. Just it's like really... when you did Cats here, I was cracking up. Just Barry Cat, our, my, my favorite new character, Craig Sims. Okay. Craig Sims is a guy who lives in LA, Pico Robertson. Yeah. He's a great guy. Okay. And he's just this sweet and cool and funny guy. But everything he talks about, he always, where, no matter what you're doing, he always says, you got to remember something, guys. And he's from oh, South Africa. Yes. Guys, you got to remember. Listen to me, bro. Dude. And he always says, dude, or bra, 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 dude, bra. You got to remember this. Everything comes from my shim, bro. You know like what? <laughs> you, you, yeah. you should do a from, like a from tour guy, a uh, National Geographic you guy. I think like, the That's very South African. Of them. They're so all South like that. They're Mollies. all Asian. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. all like that. Yeah. They're like, Elon Gold. Elon Gold, legendary guy. <laughs> And he's saving the Jewish people single-handedly. He once sat down it's with me. Puts on to be on every day. <laughs> yeah, no, he literally said that. But he goes, he goes, if you could get Larry David to put on tefillin, Mashiach will be here. <laughs> <laughs> really? Is that what yes. it takes? Is that all we need? Uh, that is a very Instagram clip. Oh, wow. That's so funny because yeah. South Africans have this, like, unwarranted confidence. But, yes. <laughs> but part of that themselves. is also, like, we like them with this British accent, too, that we're, yeah. like, more attracted to, like, oh, yeah. Rebbe Kiva Tats. But we think they're all yeah. smugglers or something. No, like, they know yeah. something we don't. But like, let me tell you something, guys. Don't say anything. Yeah, guys, dude. I spoke to God last night, and he told me. <laughs> but, but also, again, I'm saying the accent. If Rabbi Kiva Tats was like from Teaneck, you'd be like, oh, oh for guy. sure. But it all comes from a shame. No, no. But it the, all comes from a shame. But the <laughs> notion that they're they're in, that that characters are impressions of people you know. Yeah, I like that. I was hanging out with them one day, and I'm just, you know, how you lock into someone. Yeah, sure. And you go, this guy's cool, and this mm. guy's different, mm. and he has a voice, yeah. and he says similar thing. And I just said to him, we were hanging out with a bunch of guys smoking cigars, and I went, Craig. By the end of the night, 
I'm going to do you. <laughs> <laughs> Not in that way. And, uh, and I just started, I just kept staring at him. By the end of the night, all, and the whole table was going nuts. They were mm. like, oh my, it's crazy. You know when your brain tickles when you're with someone, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. got it. Got it. <laughs> When it happens, it's, you know it right away. You're like, yeah. oh, I just, I just, I just saw what the thing is. Yeah. Off air, I want to ask you about the how to cultivate impressions of like, because you're like, you tell me, you're like, oh, you could do Will Ferrell's Harry Carey. That means you could do other impressions. That is interesting. There are some people who could just do like one or two, mm -hmm. and then there's some people who could do ten or twenty, and then there's right. some people who could do hundreds. Right. It's not. It's it's just whatever's in the wheelhouse. It's just whatever. Yeah. You know, because you really can't. I Work uh, on something unless it comes to you. What? It's more like a light switch. It's a light I, I switch. I don't know how to tell someone how to do it. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like constantly. people with perfect pitch. They're yeah. like, oh, that's an F. How? How do you know? How did you learn? I don't right. know. It's, it's an F. Most people, for whatever reason, don't have perfect pitch when it comes right. to notes. Right. right. But people with perfect pitch do, and they just hear it. And they they tell they describe it to me like, well, you see red. You know what red is, right? Yeah. You don't have to like know what red is by comparison to yellow. Like I can tell, I have good relative pitch. I can tell different pitches when I hear yep. one and then the other. But uh, there are things you can describe that you're doing. But ultimately, to crack it, there's something that just goes on where you're like, there's a mechanism that yeah. Kind of and it's also like songs are like bits. Yeah, a song could take you a minute to right. write. It just channels through, and you right. do it, and you write down the lyrics and the thing, and, and there it is mm -hmm. for years and years, right. and you're working on it. It's like a bit too. Bits take ten years sometimes, mm -hmm. and sometimes ten minutes. Yeah, bits equate to song. The, uh, the 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 impression itself, impression how it happens, different. how it does it, how you can go it from it hits like, you. If I go, mm, and right. Jordan or right. Like, I, as a kid, saw The Fly five times with oh. Jeff Goldblum. And by the fifth time, I was just going, uh, uh, I'm working on something that'll change the world. <laughs> as we know, yes, 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 yes. But, but, but. And I realized he says, but. That every was second. it. Yeah, but, uh, but. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, and I was like, okay, I could just, you just feel it. You're, yeah, you're responsible for the IMAX success, based on your it's doing Jeff Goldblum it's my impressions. Doing. Oh, I Elon stock. Gold, I gotta tell you, man, you're a great uh, podcast. Let me tell you, we've said it all, <laughs> and we've done it all here, and this was one of the best podcasts uh, we've ever had. Am I right, Robin? Thank you, Robin. <laughs> and by the way... It was a great podcast, Howard. <laughs> and by the way, I think I think we did very well. Very I think well, we did folks. well. We we kept control. I didn't do a lot of impressions. I had Buckle up, I love them, but I like them. I don't mm -hmm. love them, I like them. I did a lot of... I had to um, censor myself. Every time an impression or a joke came to my head, I went, no. I didn't want to make you self-conscious, but you Why did make people happy? <laughs> Why I think that you without impressions doesn't make <laughs> people happy. It's true. It's an insecure. On. Yeah, it's an insecurity. <laughs> you don't Why? need the shield anymore. You're not at the comic strip in 1997. Take right. it off. It's true. Take off the armor. Why entertain when you can bore? <laughs> you think they want uh, a comedian? They want a sheer. Exactly. Yeah. This was a lesson. And when I was sitting with Will Smith <laughs> and Tom Cruise. Yes, close it on Rabbi Hire. Don't click that. Um, we had a good time. Thank that's you, a great Elon, time. Thank, thank you for having me. I love you guys. Love Big you fans. Too. Thanks and, for everything. Uh, yeah. That is Buckle Up episode 57, Elon Gold, available everywhere. Thank you. Samer and Ellie. God, Samer. <laughs> Ellie is here, and Ellie is our dear friend. Oh, that was that um, was very. Much Ellie like had his feature. That was like Ellie. a t-ball. Like, no, no. Oh, Ellie is our Ellie is our guest host. Ellie, for the, for is your the, special yeah. online anywhere? Can anyone oh, yes, find I, it? I am. I, it's not. We're on, editing. Uh, we're editing. We're working on it, but we're gonna release. Really it's so but, funny. Thank you. So Put the whole much. thing on YouTube yeah. eventually. Yes, long form. I, I spilled on maybe. my shirt beforehand because. <laughs> or know, maybe in a bigger. Ellie, that's menu. an endearing thing. We, we I gotta, will say, Ellie, I, at the show that we did together, incredible set, yeah. flowing off of your you special. Too. Thank yeah. you. We we got to have Ellie back on his own. To, yeah. to, to recap Why, because I talk too much? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> no, because Michael was at his show, but he wasn't Yeah, I have, I have a lot of questions for Ellie specifically. Oh, really? I do, yeah. Well, it looks like you just earned yourself a spot on there. Yeah. Well, he beat you to it. He's been <laughs> on before. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why. Uh, no, I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Ellie, uh, congrats on all that. And Thank the, you. Uh, and the special. I can't wait to see the clips and the full length, I think, at some point. But I know what you mean. You don't want to... Yeah. I don't... I, yeah, uh, yeah. Who knows what, yeah. what's And by the way, big congratulations on selling all of your chametz. I'm like halfway there. There's a few buyers that are thinking about it, and they're like, we're not sure we want this particular I was, I was at a show last night at a shul and I was in the, like preparing and I saw a sheet and I filled it out. I came with the rabbi right before I went on stage. To sell your company. To sell my like, all right, done, did, I did said, that. wow, this is great. Uh, if he could clean my car. Yeah. That would be I better. just want to know where are all these non-Jews buying this crap? Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know. Who is buying I, our company? I would love to have a, a sketch of like 
a non Jew just walking in during a seder. This must kill on the program. Just going to the mm-hmm. pantry. Mm-hmm. Going to the- I don't even do the bit. It's mm-hmm. like, <laughs> but imagine a non Jew walking in during a middle of your seder, just opening the pantry and just eating chips Everything. on the couch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> drinking a beer. And that like, would be a funny J sketch. What All is yeah. with everybody's it, like, what hey, Billy he, Madison? It, yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it, it has to be the right. It has to be the right non Jew. Yeah. You got to get the non Jew. Yeah. I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> okay, I know what you mean. No, <laughs> I, I don't know what's it there, but ended on a very niche note. I like that. I like that. that. It's, it's 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 the timing going into going into Pesach. Chag Sameach, everybody. Chag Thanks Sameach. for being on. That's episode fifty-seven. Buckle, no, no fingies. Oh, fingies. yeah. Do a little. Are we yeah. do this. Yeah. Are we fingering now? Yeah. Is that your? Uh, thing? Is this Captain Planet? That's your right. thing? <laughs> wow. That's very. <laughs> Wow! wow. <laughs> I told you by the end of the episode, I'm going to do you. He's do you. He's been married <laughs> 29 years. Is it weird that I have a, an erection oh. because I've been married and, for 20, and that's the most fingering I've and done? And say, in. Uh, say, keep it crispy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that from again? It's Pete Holmes' uh, <laughs> <that's funny. laughs> random thing. What's that? Thank you. What the hell is that fingering thing?